scientific writing series, which is actually organized by Department of Pharmacology, Young Scientists and Clinicians Network, YSCN, and also Publication Unit, SPI. I am Dr. Nurul Izzah, a senior lecturer from, from Pharmacology Department, will be the host for the two talks by our emerging writers, Dr. Wong Sok Kwan and Associate Professor Dr. Muhammad Fauzi. Uh, meanwhile, for the Scientific Writing Forum, the session will be moderated by Dr. Chin Kok Yong. So without further ado, let's welcome our first speaker, Dr. Wong Sok Kwan, a senior lecturer from Department of Pharmacology. Uh, she will be talking about uh, the tips to write review article. But before that, please allow me uh, to read on her biography. So Dr. Wong obtained her, her PhD in pharmacology from UKM. She is interested in bone metabolism, osteoporosis, metabolic syndrome, and topotrienol research. She has been awarded as top 2% scientist for the year 2020 by Elsevier. She has also been awarded with National Book Award 2020 under the category of Best Medical Book her H index is 16 and the total citations of 871. She has total publication of 42 articles with 23 of them are review articles. Therefore, she has a wide knowledge in writing review articles. So without further ado, uh, let's welcome her to share her tips on writing review articles. So the floor is yours, Dr. Wong. Thank you very much, Dr. Iza. You can hear me, right? Yes, we can hear right, you. Okay. So, thank you very much for inviting me today. Uh, you can see that. Uh, you can Tak dengar eh? Haa, uh, tak dengar tadi. Tenggelam. <laughs> Alright. Okay, I cuma cakap buat sikit lah kot. Alright, okay. So, you can hear me wrong, right? Clear? Yes, yes, clearly. Right, okay. So, okay. Thank you very much for inviting. So, basically, this will be the uh, sharing session by myself, by my me, based on the, uh, based on my experience in uh, publishing. So I really hope that uh, some of the tips here given he to you today will definitely help you in your writing and we together we boost, we help to boost the publication numbers of our faculties and also to your own uh, departments as well. Right, without further ado, just let me start the session by sharing the slides. Okay, so you can see my slide, right? Yes, yes, that's the one. It will be, uh, it will be uh, some things related uh, in general. So the tips will be in general, regardless to whatever um, review articles that you want to write. So it will be more general in this case because this is a topic on how to read tips to re uh, write a review articles. Okay. So first of all, just a little bit introductions for all of you. What is a review article? So I'm sure that all of you have a rough idea on what is a review article. Even uh, whether whether you have write it before or you have never write it before, so I guess you really have some idea on it. But commonly, this is what people are thinking about review article. Maybe uh, uh, students will think that uh, it is a manuscript based on other published articles. Okay, so basically, what is a review article? Is also a manuscript that summarizing the existing literature on the topics. So these are the common, mm, common things that will come to a, a, usually I would say in a student's mind when uh, telling you about your review articles. So uh, review
things. For example, the first one, other than summarizing the existing literature and topic that you want to write about, you should also organize it, nicely organize it, uh, uh, the existing literature. Then secondly, you need to provide critical appraisal. Uh, whatever that you want to uh, so uh, later on I will show you uh, what and then uh, highlight the current that which is not studied in uh, currently and you will need to draw some new perspective as well what are the things that you can see from the overview of the uh, studies that you have summarized in your review articles. So, and then. Sorry, Dr. Sokwan, your voice is on and off. Hello? Hello, hello, you can hear? Ah, yeah, but then the, the your voice is on and off. A moment, yeah? Okay. Is it because of the line? You are using Wi-Fi or cable, Dr. Sukwen? Cable. 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 Uh, can you hear me right now? Can you hear me right now? Yeah, we can. Uh, yes, Dr. Uh, oh, okay. I think they can hear me. All right. So everybody can hear me right now, is it? Uh, yes, Dr. All right, okay. So I'll just continue here. All right. Um, um, I'm, just, I'm not sure whether it is because of my line. So I think I was uh, off my video to ensure the smoothness of the uh, talk today. Sorry for the uh, technical issues. So firstly, uh, uh, if there's anything, just let me know. Okay? All right. So These are the uh, components that uh, you need to know as a student when you want to write a review. So these are the components uh, that you need to include in your review articles. And this is something that uh, students realize that it is uh, 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 considered quite, this is something hard for the students to put it in. So how do you want to provide a critical appraisal and everything and all, all the overview that you need to give when writing your review articles, okay? So, okay. so when you do you need to write an artic, uh, review article? So I'll give you a why uh, and when you will usually when you can be, write a review article. So the first one is when uh, you want to give, uh, you want to familiarize with your own master or PhD project. So this is basically for students. So when you want to, uh, when you get your master, when there's uh, during the very early stage of your postgraduate studies where you just get your master and PhD project. Definitely you have clueless or
Sorry, doctor, can can hear you. Tak ada suara. No, sorry for the uh, technical problem. So we are now at the uh, in the middle of um, trying to solve this problem. So I hope you guys can you guys can wait for this first. Okay. So just to check everyone whether can hear me here. From here, is that okay? Yes, yes, okay. So quan. Okay, but uh Sound is very slow, so other people replying. But I, 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 so, 
sorry once again for the technical issue. So I hope all of you can hear me now. Right? Okay. Okay, I will just uh, start we start the uh, talk for today. I think uh, I think everyone can hear me right now, right? Okay, so this is just the uh, I will start back the second slide of the today's uh, uh, talk. So first of all, just uh, when you want to write an, a review article. So firstly is uh, when you want to get familiarized with your master of uh, PhD studies. Okay, so uh, uh, so when you, you need to read a lot uh, during your project and also that is the time that you need to uh, gather and also collect all your uh, collect all your reading. So if you are not putting into a review paper, then you will definitely uh, write. If you are just writing it on a piece of paper, then uh, for sure at the end of the day, you will lose that piece of paper and uh, uh, whatever that you read is actually uh, useless actually because you are not putting it into uh, some uh, some place where you can read it back again when you need it. So when putting it into a review paper will help you uh, will help you uh, you can always review it back after your after your uh, after some time and you can reread it again when your bye bye and everything. All right? Okay. So next is. Uh, before getting a research data, so it is very important to write a review here right, before getting a research data because as we know that as a student, you need to have uh, publications for your viva and also for your uh, in order to be to graduate for your studies. So this is why uh, you need uh, papers. So it is good for you to have your review first before getting your research data. Because if you just want to wait for a research article, it will be very, very late. So towards the end of your studies, where you have gather all your data in order to have a research article. Okay. Next is uh, gathering the evidence during your discussion. Somehow, when you're writing your, somehow when you're writing your uh, research data, also uh, when you're putting all your research data into a research article, then you need to gather some of uh, the point for your discussion. There is also something that, that you can convert your discussion into a, a review paper. Okay, so third, next, uh, this is more applicable to lecturers or any, 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 uh, anyone that who are actually trying to write a new grant. So when you're organizing a new idea for a grant, so it is also, uh, you also can do a uh, do a searching and you do the, your reading, then finally you can also put it into your review article. So of course, finally, is to just re to fill your curiosity because uh, uh, when uh, you have something that you want to know about, uh, then you are just uh, curious about uh, what are the things, uh, what 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 are the research data, then you are, you will can usually do write a review paper on that just to fulfill your curiosity. Okay. So here are some of the steps to write a review. So I just summarize it into five uh, important steps here. The first one is selecting the topic of interest uh, so that you can... Uh, mm, just a moment, let me just... So firstly, it's just to re uh, select your topic of interest that uh, later I will touch, uh, will, I will go through this one by one myself. Firstly, selecting a topic of interest, then you can gather. Secondly, you gather your scientific evidence. Thirdly, you extract the data. Fourthly, and you need to organize the evidence. And fifth, you need to provide opinion and insights for your review article. Okay, let's go through this uh, one by one. Okay, for the first part, we are selecting the topic of interest. Uh, if, I'm sure that if you are a new students coming into a new project, uh, you will definitely have no ideas on what to write about. So always, my suggestion will be always start with something that is project related. So firstly, you can always start with something regarding or related to your master and PhD project. Okay, so uh, this one, for this one, you can, uh, how do you want to select the topic? Uh, later, I will show some, uh, some examples for you. Okay, uh, then uh, you need to just uh, 
you can always convert your literature review, your chapter two in, of, the, uh, of your thesis into review article. So I will just show you examples also for this later on. So uh, secondly, your topic of interest can be also some topic of your interest or something that you really want to know just to fulfill your curiosity. You have certain ideas on certain things and you can always test uh, your own topic of interest. So uh, thirdly, uh, when selecting the topic of interest, it is also very important to identify a research question. So whatever uh, it is uh, mentioned here, so I will just uh, give you an, uh, 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 a little bit interesting examples later on. Okay, so this is the first example that I'm going to give you. So this is based on my personal experience. So this is something that I worked on during my PhD project uh, studies. So this is the project title that I have during my PhD study, the effects of tocotrienol in a right model of one non g 2 metabolic syndrome. All right, so this is the top project title. So uh, as you know, when you get this uh, project, so you will need to know what is tocotrienol. So the, red, uh, the important point here will be tocotrienol, the red model of bone loss, and the bone loss is actually due to metabolic syndrome. Okay, so there are some certain things that you need to know. So how uh, metabolic syndrome can lead to osteoporosis by looking at this uh, project title. Okay, so there's a reason there are some uh, uh, video article that I uh, have produced uh, during my PhD study. The first one is the relationship between metabolic syndrome and osteoporosis. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned before, the first thing that I will need to know is how actually is there any a relationship between metabolic syndrome and bone loss. Can metabolic syndrome cause bone loss? So this is something that I really need to read for my PhD project. So this is the first review paper that I am doing. So that's why uh, I can have more understanding on how actually metabolic syndrome cause osteoporosis. Okay, so this is the first review. So secondly, the second review that I'm using is actually animal models of metabolic syndrome. So because I'm using an animal model, which is a rat model, so I just want to know how far, uh, how many evidence out there or how many types of animal model out there to, uh, uh, that, can use, and that can be used to induce metabolic syndrome. So this is the review article that I have uh, done, uh, the second one. And then the third one is I would like to do something on tocotrienol. All right, so uh, tocotrienol, so I write something to see how far is the effect, how far is the uh, study, and also how far is the research on the effects of tocotrienol on metabolic syndrome. So this is the third review article that I'm writing, okay, that uh, the effects of vitamin E as a potential uh, treatment for metabolic syndrome. So I'm looking into the animal and also human studies. Uh, so next, uh, of course, for sure, uh, looking at its project title, you can also see, uh, you can also write something about the, the effects of tocotrienol on bone loss. Uh, but of course, uh, during that time that this article uh, published on that already. So this is something that, uh, that I'm writing. So because there is really an uh, article on the uh, uh, animal evidence on the effects of tocotrienol on bone loss. So I'm thinking of other things to write. So I'm actually doing on the uh, molecular mechanism. I'm summarizing, looking into how far the mo molecular mechanisms of vitamin E or as the bone protecting agent. So this is mainly on the mechanisms of action itself only. So this is how uh, usually uh, we want to do, uh, or we want to get some ideas on what uh, we want to write which is related to our own uh, project, whether it is master project or PhD project. Okay, so these are some of the examples that you can use. So this, uh, I'm showing you my own examples. So I hope you all can have, your, have some ideas on it and also apply to your own uh, project that you are, you are working with. Okay, so secondly, it's also important to identify a research question when you want to write a review articles. So I'm picking an example here. So this is a review that uh, I wrote in uh, last year. So a review on the enhancements of calcium phosphate semen with biological materials in bone defective root healing. All right. So uh, what I want to see here is it is very important to identify the research question here. So this is not the original idea of uh, what I want to write actually. 
So the original idea of what I want to write is actually, I actually I'm actually thinking of uh, I want to write something uh, on the effects of uh, calcium phosphate cement. This is typically is the calcium phosphate cement on wound effect healing. So and uh, this is the initial stage uh, where uh, I want to write about. So when I search through the uh, uh, the, the search engine, so I realized that there's too many evidence. So there are so many studies out there. Uh, using uh, reporting the effects of the uh, calcium, this calcium phosphate treatment on bone defect healing. So uh, it is too much evidence, which can, uh, which is almost impossible for me to write. So I try to uh, narrow it down again. So I try to look for uh, what about uh, enhanced because uh, calcium phosphate treatment has been uh, very established. So I try to narrow it down into enhanced uh, calcium phosphate treatment. All right. So uh, because uh, uh, how to say, uh, uh, because uh, calcium phosphate cement is already yet very established. So uh, literature has been uh, started to uh, do some enhancement on uh, TPP. So in order to, uh, in order to improve the limitations of uh, calcium phosphate cement, which can be uh, somehow very, uh, it, it is lack of mechanical strength, something like that. So uh, it is very important to do some enhancement on that. So by looking at the uh, evidence also, I searched through the uh, search engine as well. So I still find that it is too much evidence. So I try to narrow it down again. So because I realized from here, I, I realized from here some of the CPC is actually enhanced by uh, synthetic materials and some are actually enhanced by uh, biological materials. So that's a reason why I uh, that's the reason why I uh, further select it. So I try to narrow it down to see the enhancements of the CPC using the biological material. Okay, so I check through the search engine again. So I find that it is manageable. So I actually get uh, around uh, at the end of the result, at the end of the screening and everything, I actually just uh, included into the, uh, included into the uh, uh, review. So that's why I think it is manageable and I, I proceed it. Okay, so next, uh, after, uh, after selecting of the title, so I go to gathering the scientific evidence. So this is the second step where you need to uh, gather your evidence. So how do you want to gather evidence? The first thing is to search, to use the search engine, but not publisher. Okay. So uh, just want to let you know what is the difference between search engine and also publisher. Firstly, uh, the search engine is uh, uh, you can actually have a collection of articles across publisher. So you need to use search engine because it can offer you a wider, uh, a wider search. So you have a wider uh, records that you will get because it is actually a cross publisher. That means there's multiple publisher in one search engine. So when it is only publisher, the search results will be based on the collections of articles in one publisher. So it is basically on that particular publisher. So in terms of search engine, it provides you a wider search because it can you can get articles across publisher. Okay, so here are some of the examples of search engine. The first one is PubMed, Medline, Scopus, Web of Science, Epcohor, Sina, uh, Cochrane Library, and also Zestor. Okay. Uh, for the uh, publisher, the examples will be like Signet, right? Uh, Dog Press, MBTI, Stringer, Lily, Taylor and Francis, and Dawi. So these are some of the examples. So uh, I will just uh, let you know that it is important for you to search using search engine rather than just using publisher. Okay, something that uh, I want to show you here is actually I'm very sure that some of the students, especially those newcomers, uh, those who are just uh, registered as the students, uh, this is the uh, UKM, uh, uh, UKM website for you to do a uh, search. Uh, you have some of the database here because, as you know, that PubMed, uh, you are you are free to use it. Okay, even uh, outside you can use free to use it anyway. But for example, Scopus and other uh, databases, uh, you need to use the institution. Uh, line or the internet line in order to access or you can use this remotely from uh, uh, by through you can library so i hope uh, if those who haven't uh, get or you don't have any uh, uh, account for this uh, try to get an initiative to 
look to to look for how you will have this uh, uh, ID number and you can log in into here and you definitely you can get uh, some of the journal submission report the database the, the WOS and you can freely use it for your search for your literature search. Okay, in order to do some uh, searching through the uh, uh, search engine, so you will need some Boolean operators to help you, okay, with all your keywords. So here I will just let uh, you all know uh, some of the Boolean operators that is commonly used. The first one is N. When you are putting N, because uh, when you have your, the A and B is actually your keywords. So your keywords that is related to the topics that you want to write about, okay. So if you have two keywords together with you and you want to do some searching and right, you are putting in uh, the Boolean operator as N, so you, the records that you find is actually must contain all the keywords. So all the keywords must be present. So whether regardless of whatever your keywords that you are putting in, so if you are putting N in between, that means in your all your search, the records must contain all the keywords. Okay, so if you are putting all, meaning that the records can include any of the words. The A, the one with A, you, you are also getting it. The one with B, your keyword is also getting it. Okay. The third one is the third Boolean operator is not. Okay. Uh, for not, if you are putting A, not B, that means you are only getting the records that contain uh, keyword A but without B, uh, keyword B. Um, next, we look into. Uh, some of the symbols that is also commonly used here uh, during your searching, this is some of the symbols. Uh, but I just want to let you all know that uh, these uh, symbols can be unique for each of the uh, search engine. But uh, this is the most commonly that you can always use in uh, PubMed and Scopus. But some of the other search engine, you may just have a look at the, uh, the guide in order what kind of symbols that they are, they are using uh, in order to represent all these things. So uh, first one, uh, the symbols here is bracket. So bracket is usually they are used to indicate the sequence of the chip. So sometimes you have uh, combinations of Boolean operator with multiple uh, multiple keywords represent different concepts of your search. Okay, so when you are putting uh, your example here, A and B or C, so you will actually get different things and with this A and B or C with a bracket. So uh, the search engine will actually process your uh, keywords with Boolean operator, the, the, the whole string of it uh, from left to right, okay? But with the bracket, you will actually make the sequence differently, okay? They will actually process those in bracket first, then only, then, then only from left to right, okay? So this is the difference outcome here. So when you are putting A and B or C together without the bracket, so you were actually getting the records for A and B first, which is in the middle because they must contain both keywords A and B, and then or C, which is the holdings of the, uh, which is uh, those records that also contains keyword C. Okay, when the second one, A and B or C, the B or C with bracket, so this is the outcome that you will get. Okay, you are getting you are getting the B or C first, the whole thing, but those intersect with the uh, keywords A. So this is the part that you will get. So I hope you all can uh, imagine this. Uh, these are the difference. So it actually indicates the sequence. So the, the search engine process which keywords first. Okay, you can also use uh, your asterisk as your translation for translation. For example, if you're putting osteo for asterisk, osteo asterisk, so you are, you are getting all these kinds of uh, uh, the, your records will consist of all these kinds of words, for example, osteoporosis, osteoarthritis, osteoblast, osteoclast, osteosarcoma, osteomalacia, osteopetrosis, and other osteo. The word osteo, there, there are some, some others again. So uh, you will also get it. Okay, so for the uh, open and close inverted comma, so, the, uh, so you will get the exact phrase, for example, bone health. So the if you are typing bone health with the uh, inverted uh, comma, open and close inverted comma, you will actually get, get the first one, which is bone health in, in the whole, whether in the in the title or in the abstract, uh, you will get something like the first one here. 
So you won't be getting uh, in a sentence, the bone, something, then there are some bones in between and health again. So you are not getting bone and health. Again. All right, so this is the exact word that you will be getting. So it's just like the first example here. So uh, I give you some of the examples here. Uh, so these are the keywords that I'm using for this article. So uh, these are the keywords and also Boolean operator that I'm using for, for writing this review. So I would just let you know that it is very important for you to identify the concept. So how do you want to put in uh, N or O? How do you want to do it? So in your article or in your review on a research topic, on certain topic that you want to write about, okay? So you need to identify what are the key concepts of your review article. So the first one here, it will be enhancement because I want enhancement. The second one, it will be mainly on the semen, the second concept here. The third one is will be the bone, de uh, bone defect healing. So there are three concepts here. So that's why the first concept will be uh, this part. The same concept we will be using for as your boolean operator. Okay. So for calcium phosphate semen, there is no, I think there is no uh, other keywords to represent. Or if, uh, if there is, you can put it in. If there is no, then you just put one. Okay, for the bone defect, I want to see bone defect, so I put uh, some uh, certain related uh, uh, keywords here. So uh, same again, the same concept, I will put it, I will use the Boolean operator as O. Well. When you want to combine three different concepts together, you can just use N. Okay, so these are the, some of the, uh, uh, the way that usually we use to search for the uh, uh, literature out there, what, what are the literature out there for your topic. The third step here will be extracting the data. So uh, after you do your searching, where you, you do the screening and everything, you come up with a certain numbers of studies that you want to put it in your review article, then after that you need to extract the data. So you need to extract the information from your previous from the previous study. So here are some of the import uh, some of the example. I would say that it is an example. Uh, of course, it also depends on what kind of uh, review article that are you doing in terms of the topic. Okay, for example, these are some of the examples here. You can uh, summarize for authors the type. If you are putting, if you are actually doing some things regarding to this, all right. So this is not necessary. You must exactly follow what I am giving you as this as example. This is just an example, and uh, it can be changed depending on your topic of uh, your review articles, uh, what are the things that you are summarizing, so it can be changed uh, based on your own topic of interest. Okay, so the second one can be type of, uh, for example, if you are, you are summarizing uh, evidence from animal uh, cell, uh, cell culture studies and also human studies, you can always, uh, you can always put in uh, this uh, information, you can extract this information out from your, from the uh, literature out there, the evidence out there. All right, so there are type of the model, for example, animal cells or uh, what kind of animal model, for example, it is an osteoporosis model or the cells, what kind of cells they're using, is it also blood cell or sites or you, are, you can have, if you're doing some things on cancer, you can you can list down what are the animal model used, for example, then what are the cells that you are using. So if let's say you are summarizing or you are extracting the data from the from human studies, you can also uh, put in some subject characteristics, uh, extract out the subject characteristics for that particular studies. Okay, so if there is something uh, regarding on the treatment, like for example, writing something on uh, the effects of drug A on certain disease, then you are putting into, you can put it into what is the intervention, what are the treatment, what are the dose used, what are the roles of administration, what are the duration. So here are some of the important points that you can put it in. And of course, you need to summarize also the findings, what are the findings from that study. And sometimes there will be certain limitation that has been addressed by the authors. You can also put it in your uh, data extraction. So in order to do the uh, data extraction, what do you, you what you can do? So I have uh, uh, some uh, uh, recommendation to you. First thing, I think you can use uh, uh, Google Form. You can create a Google Form out there. For example, here are some of the examples that I can uh, show it to you. For example, uh, you just put type of study, type of model, whatever it is, whatever that you want to put in uh, for that topic. You want to summarize for that topic. You create a Google Form, something like that. Then you can. 
report after you you read your you read the article then you input all your information into it then after that you submit then you are able to generate your um, table in the form of something like this okay somehow it is uh, this method is very useful when you have a collaboration with your friends uh, and you are actually uh, you are actually uh, uh, doing things together something sometimes for example you are doing things together this is uh, something that is very useful where everybody can contribute together all right then uh, if you are comfortable also you can use this uh, second method where uh, you put everything straight away if uh, straight away into the uh, Microsoft Word or Excel that you are you are just summarized based on the after you read your the go through uh, the uh, studies you just put everything into uh, you just put the important information that you want to include into a table something in the table something like this okay so it is uh, also important to summarize the data uh, using your own words this can actually uh, limit the uh, plagiarism uh, then you can because you are using your own words to write your you to, to summarize the data and everything so this can actually uh, limit the plagiarism uh, you are actually copying from the other articles okay so um after that you need to organize your evidence after you have uh, extract the data out you need to organize the evidence so look through the uh uh, here are some of the steps you can do when you want to do uh, you want to organize your evidence. You just have to look through all the evidence after you have summarized one by one of the uh, studies that you go through after you summarize all the information. Then you have really have to go through the whole table that you have summarized. Uh, and then you need to identify major themes so that you can uh, rearrange that you can rearrange all your evidence uh, properly. Okay, you can use uh, the highlight function. You can highlight certain, like for example, you uh, you are highlighting uh, some of the uh, positive outcome for certain colors and uh, negative outcome with certain colors. Then end up you can uh, rearrange it uh, easily. So you group all the studies together, and then you can break it into a different table. So these are the steps that you can do it. Okay, just taking an example here. Uh, how do you want to uh, uh, organize your day, uh, organize your evidence. So here are just some of the example. Of course, you can have uh, different types of arrangement also based on the uh, review topic that you are doing. So for example, the first one you can uh, categorize. Uh, you can arrange it uh, according to type of the studies. For example, you are you are putting your in vitro studies together. You are putting your in vivo studies together and human studies together. So you can also arrange it based on outcome, whether that is positive effects negative effects or no significant effects or no relationship okay you can also uh, arrange it that way uh, thirdly you can maybe uh, arrange it uh, according to type of the disease that you are doing for example if let's say you are you are doing on something you are, uh, you are writing something on the effects of uh, uh, drug a on muscular cell disease so you can actually uh, organize your review based on the types of the Disease, for example, osteoporosis, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and also osteosarcoma. So these are some of the examples. Okay. Then, uh, of course, when you are doing, if let's say you are you are doing a review on certain assessment tools in uh, certain, uh, for example, any any disease, for example, display pressure, and you can also do, uh, you can also uh, rearrange your evidence based on the assessment tool. Uh, if you are doing uh, certain extraction methods on uh, on certain things, then you can also arrange it based on the types of the attraction method that you want to. You are gathering uh, from your from the literature search, and also you can sometimes you can also uh, arrange your evidence based on the parameter measured. For example, if you are looking into certain bone parameters, you can you can actually see the effects of certain uh, drug. Let's say you are, you are writing certain uh, drug A on the uh, bone uh, bone parameters, then you can you can separate them uh, based on the bone parameter, for example, microcytosis, the bone structure, the bone mineral density, and everything. Okay, so these are some of the examples. So uh, that you can, uh, you can, uh, that can give you as a reference for your writing. Okay, uh, this is the example taking from my own paper as well. So uh, 
you will definitely know that uh, when you are gathering all the data together with you, I mean, you are extracting the data. So it is very normal that you have all those heterogeneous uh, uh, things with you. Okay, but you really have to rearrange it nicely. Just like taking an example that here, what I want to show you here is actually for this paper, I actually get a lot of heterogeneous data, uh, the, the, the evidence as well, because the enhancement, the, the enhancer that being used here, so whatever that uh, previous uh, researcher has been investigated on, they are so heterogeneous that uh, uh, there are so many things here uh, which is very heterogeneous. And it is, I know it is very hard for, it is definitely very hard uh, for to, to organize it, but you really have to get some, uh, what, what are the major themes here. So end up, I am uh, I I rearrange it and I put it under the category of protein because I realized that all these things are actually protein. Okay, so I just uh, identify the major theme as protein. So I just put everything protein uh, under this category, which is the calcium phosphate theme as enhanced by protein. So this is some of the example. This is the example that I'm going to show you. Uh, and finally, the fifth step is uh, provide opinions and insights. So uh, it is uh, after you have uh, doing your extraction, uh, your data extraction, you have re reorganized it. So what? So what do you, what you need to do next? So you need to provide uh, opinions and insights. So uh, firstly, you can give overview on what is the stage of uh, current knowledge. Okay, what is the evidence so far telling you? Okay. This is the first thing, very first thing, uh, which is uh, summarized from uh, whatever that you have put into your evidence, as your evidence. So after that, you can critically appraise the evidence, whereby uh, these are some of the things that you can put it in, whether there is inconsistencies of uh, knowledge, whether there is uh, whether it is inconsistency or consistency, you can also discuss on it. Okay. Uh, um, then also you can put in uh, limitations also of the available evidence. Okay, so you can comment on it. What are the limitations uh, for the available evidence? So of course you can also generate your own opinion and insight. For example, you have put in limitations of current review. So is it uh, any limitations of your review? Because somehow when we have uh, many evidence into it and uh, we are we are comparing between studies uh, from study to study. So which uh, uh, it, it should be very careful in that in the sense that because we are not comparing based on under the same experimental setting. So these are certain uh, limitations. There are some of the limitations of uh, uh, possible limitations of uh, in review. Okay. So and uh, you can also draw some new perspective when after you looking into how far the evidence go, what are the new perspectives that you want to give it and any research gap uh, between those studies. That, uh, that can be a future recommendations, uh, future recommendations for your for the future research that you need to put everything into the uh, video article. So all these kind of uh, things you need to put it into your video article in order to make your review more impactful and also it can serve as certain uh, scientific basis to the uh, to the reader. You can give some ideas to the other readers as well. So other tips to make your review writing easy. So use a short and simple sentence. Okay, check for tenses. Ask your friends to help you change your tenses. Error, uh, grammatical error, mistake. Okay, using the right writing tools. For example, you can draw some uh, schematic uh, diagram using PowerPoint. For uh, so far, I'm using PowerPoint only. Uh, of course, you can have other software if you are familiar with. All right. Uh, then for the uh, reference management, you can uh, use Endnote and the uh, for language editing, you can use Grammarly or any other software or any other thing software that you have with you. And then uh, Microsoft Word is itself is also a very good uh, writing tools because there are all that all kinds of uh, style, style and also formatting which can make your writing easier. Okay, so this is basically the structures of a review. So introduction uh, in the introduction section. So you can always give definitions on what your topic is. You can have a, some problem. Uh, problem that is being uh, that is faced currently for example the disease burden so uh, then you can link it to your current ideas objectives and also the impacts of your review so what does your review offer to the reader okay uh, to then goes to literature search you can use search engine okay as i previously mentioned and then uh, how do you want to put your keywords 
okay, could keyword this based on the topic that you have selected. Okay, the Boolean operators, how do we want to combine the concept together? Okay, whether it is using or and, and uh, you can also use certain symbol that then uh, for the, uh, you can also include certain inclusion and exclusion criteria, especially when you're writing a scoping review and also systematic review. Okay, so for the content, you need to extract the information into evidence table. So I would suggest uh, with the aid of the evidence table, it will help you, uh, it, it will definitely help you. Uh, okay, so, and then you can also systematically arrange your evidence and you provide the current stage of understanding. Uh, and finally, uh, give some perspective. Just now I've given, given you some example of what are the things that you can put it in. For example, the limitations of current studies or current review. Okay, what are the things, perspective, and also what are the future research direction. Okay, uh, some, uh, this is a little bit, uh, I think this is a last tips that I want to share with all of you, how to make multiple review article possible. Okay, so as you know that this is the common uh, process of it, starting from uh, getting ideas on what are the topics of your review, then you started to draft your manuscript, after that you send it to your supervisor, and your supervisor is okay with it, then you will proceed for the submission, and it will go to, after the peer review, uh, uh, if it is okay, the, the reviewer is okay after your correction and everything, it will be getting accepted. So these are the common process of your uh, uh, manuscript submission. But uh, what uh, usually the, the cycle will come again when after getting accepted. So if you have uh, certain new ideas, you can go again. Uh, you can go ahead to write a second review articles and the process goes again. Okay, but uh, how about uh, making, if let's say you want to make more publication number, how about thinking uh, of moving the step a little bit in front? Okay, uh, when you have your drafted your manuscript and you send it to your supervisor, how, how, uh, how is it possible for you to read generate, generating new ideas while waiting for your supervisor to check for it? So you can also start generating a new ideas and start drafting the, uh, another manuscript before your supervisor return your metric to you. So this is one of the way that you can actually uh, make the process faster. So uh, it is something that is uh, under your control that you can have uh, uh, more publication in the, uh, uh, throughout the year of your postgraduate studies. So with this, you can have another process again after you are sending the second manuscript to the supervisor and while waiting for him or her to review back to you, you can start generating the ideas. So in this way, you can, you can make the process faster and you can get more publication throughout your master of PhD. Okay, so this is basically the last uh, tips given to you. So I think that's all from me for today. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Sokwan, for the information of writing the review articles. Uh, so we are sorry to inform that the Q&A session will be performed during the forum. So as for now, uh, we will proceed to the second session. So we would like to welcome Associate Prof. Dr. Muhammad Fauzi, the Head of Department uh, of CITEM, uh, for his talk on the tips to publish in Q1 journals. But before that, let me introduce him. He obtained his PhD in tissue engineering from UKM. Some of his research interests include functional biomaterials, skin tissue engineering, and controlled release drug delivery system. Dr. Fauzi has received uh, numerous recognition for his works, some notably uh, awards include gold medal for Malacca International Intellectual Exposition and Duta Innovasi UKM 2021-2023. His H index is 16 and total citations of 845. His, his total publication is 65 articles with 38 of them are Q1, Q1 journals with himself as the corresponding author and the main author. Therefore, he has a tremendous experience in publishing in Q1 journals. So without further ado, let's welcome him to share his tips in publishing in Q1 journals. 
So the floor is yours, Dr. Fauzi. Okay, Assalamualaikum and uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Thanks uh, to Dr. Teza, uh, Department of Pharmacology, uh, SKI, and also YSN. Uh, Today I would like to uh, share some of the uh, so-called uh, the sweet and sour uh, to publish in the uh, Q1 journal. Uh, but it's like so-called disclaimer, basically. Uh, this is an open session. It's not really, uh, it should be casual. So you can ask, uh, interrupt me anytime, basically. So uh, I will share my slide first. Uh, wait a moment. Can you see my slide? Yes. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, today's topic is a really challenging for me to uh, deliver uh, to everyone. Uh, I believe uh, we do have the senior lecturer or senior professor that really have, uh, what I call it, uh, experience in terms of uh, publishing Q1 journal and top 10 journal. So uh, today I would like to like, really uh, touch or share uh, in terms of my uh, small experience uh, in uh, Q1 uh, publication uh, journals. Uh, uh, the topic that uh, provide to me is tips on how to publish in Q1 journals, basically. Uh, I try to uh, so-called make it a direct point for everyone to think how to improve uh, your own uh, so-called uh, paper later on. Uh, this one uh, kind of like uh, from my experience uh, in the, uh, in the uh, what I call it point of view in term of like uh, as a reviewer for uh, journals. So uh, topic today that I would really like to uh, touch basically will be uh, as a doctor so can already touch in terms of review paper. So basically I will touch uh, in terms of original research paper. Uh, the first topic will be like anatomy of an article. So we will go to the section of suitable journals. And last but not least, will, uh, will be handling experience in submission and publishing. So first of all, uh, the backbone, as everyone knows, even a new student, a newbie, or a new researcher, okay, that really want to uh, how to uh, explore, uh, to write really uh, so-called basic, fundamental, and good uh, uh, manuscript uh, structure for Q1 journals. Okay? So I learned from experience. Uh, I, I'm not really a uh, so-called uh, excellent writer. But uh, my diamond in, in, uh, publi in publication of Q1 journal will be like my uh, so-called uh, student and research group and collaborators, uh, basically. So uh, the first uh, call it main component for the backbone of an article will be like the, uh, the title. And then uh, the, uh, what I call it, the selected authors or, uh, that you, you uh, that involve in your research. And we will go through directly the abstract and uh, the uh, substantial uh, keywords. So, and then uh, we go on into the introduction, uh, how to write, uh, what I call it, good. I, I will like really uh, talk about the good things, okay? Good, uh, so-called, not really excellent, not really a poor introduction, but it's a good. So everyone could like really adopt and apply to your, your own uh, manuscript uh, in the expert, uh, your, your own expert field, okay? So basically, they have an introduction. Uh, it should be reveals uh, your purpose of the paper, basically. It should be start from the broad. And then you need to focus narrow down until you your uh, until you stated your uh, is focus your research question and also the aim of the study for that particular paper. Okay, and then we go through the methods. Okay, uh, or if you have the you have specific method methods, you can go divided into two a uh, category. But if you don't have it, you know you want to mix it, you can just directly uh, focus on the methodology and then you uh, can like uh, write in details your your methodology. Okay, uh, the result section will be like uh, direct. Uh, direct explanation uh, for your uh, for your outputs, okay? In uh, from your methods, you will have the uh, so-called findings, right? No need to explain uh, more or flowery sentences, okay? In the result section, just go directly. It's high, high. It's significant, significant. It's low, it's low. Okay? Don't make it like a really uh, ambiguous sentence and really like uh, the flowery sentence that last, uh, what we call it our editor. Editor office will be like not really interested with your paper. Okay. And then uh, we go broader again in terms of a discussion and uh, conclusion section. So where discussion will be like lead uh, or really uh, focus on your uh, the selling point. So meaning that if you see, uh, if you focus in terms of your, uh, uh, your field itself, one, for example, mine, uh, focus on biometric technology. So basically all the parameters, all the methodology almost the same. But how to sell uh, the, the key point for your paper is different, you know? So that's why you need to have a lot of uh, 
uh, reaching the high impact uh, journal article already published and then you try to uh, come up with some points and try to relate your current uh, output of findings okay and then you need to have discussed really nicely so i will show you the good uh, so-called flow of a uh, nice discussion later on so last but not least will be like conclusion so meaning that you need to uh, really have a general uh, so-called conclude for your findings and you could do uh, depending on the journal basically sometimes uh, they want to like point by point so you could do that basically in terms of the conclusion style and please uh, bear in mind try to put the uh, so-called a bit of maybe two sentences of a future perspective okay from your own study and last but not least will be like references so uh, how I normally or how I educate I educate my student uh, to uh, to uh, construct uh, the uh, call original research paper. So I will start from the uh, compilation of uh, all results, okay, from uh, my my student thesis uh, objective, and then we will uh, select which uh, parameters, uh, meaning that, that we will uh, publish on the particular uh, phases of the uh, research study. Okay? And the first will be like table and figures and then uh, compile together with the result and then we go directly methods. Method you can always write uh, even though you start your uh, project basically. So you should have, uh, for, for students itself, uh, for students itself, normally I will advise you once you start uh, lab work, you need to uh, learn how to uh, write down everything. It's not really in the logbook. Logbook is always uh, uh, every day in the lab, right? So you will uh, really scribble or so ever inside the logbook. But methodology is like final met methods that you will imply, okay, for your thesis writing later on and also the article, okay? Uh, I will not go through directly from methods to discussion. Normally, I try to create a preliminary title. So for, uh, for me to guide my uh, my my aim in terms of discussion later on and also the introduction so after that i will pre-polish again uh, uh the title as a, as a final uh, as a final title for me uh, before i submit to the journal basically and then the uh, and then i will focus on the abstract and selective the uh, selective keywords for the q1 uh, journal publication so before i go further uh part by part for the articles, uh, and of the an article, I would like to uh, sh uh, share uh, from the Asavio basically. The reason I rejected your article, okay, it's quite harsh, but it's a true uh, point of view in terms of like uh, three years as a reviewer from from the peer, uh, from the journal system. So please bear in mind to uh, uh, be careful. Uh, this eight, uh, what I call it, uh, I, uh, technical no call, I could say, okay, the main point before before you submit to the uh, Q1 journal. It fails the technical screening. Okay, you need to uh, you need to call basically uh, the journal's requirements uh, for the uh, any uh, pub, uh, pub, what we call it a type of journal. Uh, sorry, type of yeah, article that you want to submit uh, to the journals. Okay, and then uh, please read thoroughly the aims and scope. Okay, sometimes uh, from our perspective, uh, we know that uh, our article is uh, include okay in that in their aims and scope, but apparently it's not. Sometimes they're just stated uh, generally, right? But at the end, they have at least a bundle of uh, main focus of component to scope. So you need to really go through uh, for that particular uh, aims and scope uh, section from their website, okay? It's uh, incomplete. So sometimes uh, the, the uh, editorial, uh, what you call it, uh, academic uh, editor, sometimes it seems that your paper is not really uh, complete in terms of, uh, what you call it, a tremendous uh, coverage of your of your specific uh, study so meaning that sometimes uh, people just publish in terms of uh, for example in my in my field is just like characterization okay of our uh, development of material but uh, some general need until in vivo study sometimes they need until like really uh i call it molecular study for the cells uh scaffolding uh, interaction so you need to you need to bear in mind uh, uh, try to digging uh, their information in terms of publish, uh, previous published paper, try to see how big uh, the data or parameters that already covered uh, within that, uh, I call it published paper under that uh, K1 journal. Okay? So the procedures and analysis of the data it seems to be defective. So it depends, this one is really subjective. Sometimes we are just uh, doing, uh, I mean, uh, writing the uh, really uh, simple or uh, not details of your methodology. Sometimes you just quote from other paper, but you're not really briefly or in details uh, explain what have been done before. Okay, and then the conclusions cannot be justified. Uh, normally, uh, you you are really not uh, 
uh, tally. I mean, though your conclusion is not tally with the aim or scope that you stated in the uh, last paragraph of your introduction. So you need to be like really see for, from the uh, overall information that you already stated in that uh, papers. Okay. And then it's simply a small extension of different paper. This one need to be careful. Okay, I know uh, some of the like uh, really uh, uh, some of the research uh, researchers really just published uh, almost similar uh, findings. Uh, okay, at, the, at different journals or maybe at different quartile of the uh, papers, but at last uh, they really can cross check basically. So be careful on that. Okay, uh, try to be uh, what I call it uh, intelligent in term in term of. Uh, how to write the nice uh, story uh, storyline for your paper and later on if their their cross check is not really a uh, similar what I call it uh, coverage in terms of your uh, in terms of your data okay sometimes it's really uh, what I call it um, maybe 70 percent of your whole data you can conclude with the same that you already uh, you already provide 100 percent of the at, at the other journal so they really identify you know it's another 30 percent of your published paper you know it's not really uh, extensive so so be careful on that Please decide uh, what I call it wisely before you publish. And then uh, it's, this one is uh, incomprehensible. Basically, this one, depending on the, you need to have uh, really thorough uh, proofreading, English uh, proofreads, you need to be, uh, be discussed with your supervisor, maybe to send out uh, for the good uh, proofreader before you submit to high impact journal, uh, mainly for Q1. And it, uh, the eighth point would be like, it's boring. So this one for me is a subjective. Uh, in my life, uh, when, when I talk about the uh, publication to my students, uh, even uh, we submit the proposal, right, to get grants, it's always subjective and depending on luck, these two things. But uh, don't, uh, don't uh, please bear in mind that uh, don't make it, uh, uh, I mean, uh, your energy is only motivated if you're rejected by this journal, try to improve. Sometimes the journal gives some opinions, right, uh, for, for the improvement, try to go through and then improve the paper and submit to the other journal. Okay, some of the journals, they ask you improve and resubmit again. So 50-50. So it could be like published later on. Okay, so back to the backbone of the uh, or anatomy of the uh, uh, an article. So choose a professional title. Okay, mainly focus on uh, what, what is your main components of the research. Only you, you know, right? So I mean, uh, you are the expert in the field. Okay, you try to blast, uh, try to avoid the duplication of the same uh, almost a uh, title style okay and, uh, and then uh, to ensure the title will be like cover the narrative tone of the paper review research paper in vitro maybe molecular so you need to ensure that title should be like in glance yeah, uh, if like the academic editor or reviewer read it so they, they will know okay this they will be like content of this paper okay and then the method use so this one subjective uh, it depends on uh, on your particular field okay to put in or not so the final title has several characteristic, okay, uh, as I mentioned previously. So it covered uh, generally the subject and scope of the study. Please uh, avoid to use observation. So, uh, however, in certain case, you can't uh, really avoid that. Sometimes you are using commercial available product that have really have their, their own abbreviation, but it depends on the journals. You need to be uh, really uh, uh, details and particularly informed to that uh, circulatory board, so editorial office about this uh, circulation in the title. So use word that creative or positive impression and stimulate reader interest. This one uh, it depends how 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 creative are you to uh, what you call it to uh, embark uh, a, a new reader or newcomers to read through your whole manuscript when they uh, go through in glance your title. Okay, use current nomenclature from the field only you know which one the best, which one the term or uh, we call it keywords or key points for your, for your study. Okay. Uh, we are really suggest uh, for you to, to uh, have a relationship between variables and support the major hypothesis uh, in the title. Okay, I will show you later on how to do that. And then uh, the words, uh, I mean, the, the, the total words for the title will be like, for me, it's subjective basically. Sometimes, uh, uh, the title referring maybe a specific niche, but the, the, the total offer is really lengthy. But uh, you can justify, and, and uh, it, it depends on case by case uh, uh, what you call it, uh, scenario. Lah. Okay, please do not include, I mean, the study of analysis or similar wordy construct, uh, construction. But at certain case, uh, at certain journals, uh, they are not really uh, strict about this, so it's still subjective. Sometimes we are we are not put it uh, in the title, but after major revision, for example, with the uh, so-called reviewers, they ask us to do that. 
So if you're not follow, there's a high risk uh, for rejection, right? So that's why I put a subjective. Okay? And make sure it's a use correct grammar, capitalization, and I try to avoid uh, the, uh, uh, I mean, avoid questions right, for the title. So for the abstract, uh, abstract giving uh, us in terms of uh, the uh, in-glance information uh, for the whole thing in your uh, manuscript, either original article or review article. So it contains of the uh, uh, brief introduction, brief uh, problem statement, the aim of your study, and then uh, you will be like briefly uh, provide the what call it uh, essential study design, and then uh, just report major findings in your abstract. Okay. Nowadays, when I uh, when, when I try to review a paper, most of them try to just uh, imply the descriptive. Uh, I mean, uh, sentence mainly for the uh, what I call it result section. So uh, we are really discussing in terms of editorial board uh, normally for review board. So most of the time we should do some some sort of the quantification of visual, uh, uh, what I call it, uh, the value of the, the result should be uh, put over there. Just focus on the major finding that at last you can conclude, okay, at the last of your abstract. So no need to, if you have like 12 parameters, no need to put 12, but you could select the best uh, parameters that represent your whole study. So at last we will read through all your manuscript, right? So the good uh, software abstract, uh, for example, when the readers want to read the rest of the paper after reading your abstract. So if no, you need to revise again. So meaning that your abstract will be like uh, the heart of the paper, okay? For for the like people really want to go through your uh, your your whole uh, uh, original paper or review paper. So problem to avoid for the abstract, uh, please, uh, yeah, avoid the ambiguous sentence, okay? This one is just example. I, I just put really uh, maybe understandable uh, sentence, right? The chicken is ready to eat. So what do you understand about that? So uh, the chicken itself is ready to go to eat, right? So or the chicken is already prepared for us to eat it. So some sort of that. Try to avoid this kind of like sentence okay, in the uh, abstract. So don't use abbreviation. If possible, don't use, okay? Avoid the jargon, okay? And then uh, avoid the elliptical and incomplete sentence, okay? And then last but not least will be like, don't, do not referring any so-called uh, the recent papers or uh, previous uh, study in the abstract. Okay, so the abstract will be like really concise, brief and direct to the point, that's all. Okay, the constructed abstract. So we go for the, for the introduction. So most of the time introduction will be like from the broader perspective until uh, your focus area, your aim of study, your specific parameter that you want to check to answer okay uh, your your hypothesis and the objective uh, for the for the paper so uh, how to write that okay uh, please establish an area to research okay uh, for for the reader lead the reader from a general research area to particular field of research just uh, i always uh, start the first paragraph uh, with the prevalence okay that that is my my style basically so i start with the prevalence i create the uh, problem statement that we want to cater on later okay and then uh, we will like really summarize current understanding and background information about the topics okay introduction you, if possible you try to cover all sort of the components that you uh, studied okay uh, in in that particular research okay for 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 the introduction so make it more narrow Okay, following uh, the paragraph, and it depends on you. Sometimes it's a, uh, the the flow will be like connected each other, or you could like really do uh, isolated par uh, every paragraph. So it depends. Okay, I will show you later on uh, from my uh, uh, PhD student paper how to do that. And then uh, a good impression of the introductions. Uh, always open with a compelling story. Okay, try to like uh, a provocative and uh, question. Uh, describe the puzzling that at last uh, people uh, might guess or might know that what you will do later on. Okay, what is your uh, possible or potential result later on, and what is the final conclusion? Okay. So uh, for the methodology section, this is how we did. So meaning that what you try to uh, to do depending on your aim of the study. Okay, please choose a particular method or, or procedure. Okay, write in details in the methodology. Okay. And then uh, data collection, you need to, uh, is uh, ethically appropriate or not. So you need to uh, use really, uh, what I call it, uh, the right statistical analysis and software, how to validate significant or not significant. Okay? 
and then uh, you need to evaluate is it the method or procedure okay uh, answer all the question that you raise for that particular paper okay depending on the objective of the study and then please relook really again on your on your methodology uh, writing is it reproducibility if you ask other people from other field is it understandable or not okay that's why you need to have like uh, someone from out of the field to validate your writing is it understandable or not because once you publish not only the person in the field will read it maybe someone out of uh, out of like uh, our fields right so sometimes uh, the newbie uh, there's something uh, someone that really want to gain the knowledge okay that's why you need to guide them really uh, really nice and really detailed in terms of uh, methodology writing so problem to avoid uh, don't provide any background information okay uh, that doesn't uh, really help to the reader okay focus directly how you apply the method okay it's not on the mechanics of doing a method okay just mention uh, normally in past tense right so what what you did before okay to achieve this certain parameters later on in the uh, result section okay do not ignore problems sometimes uh, you could like uh, really uh, you, be honest in terms of uh, writing the uh, methodology, what, what you did, and then what uh, maybe the expected uh, output later on. You could explain, you could discuss in the discussion section. So in the result section, this is how we see. So you already did it, your research, and then you will see. Okay, meaning that in the results, in the uh, using figure, uh, you have the so-called graph, and sometimes you have like uh, tables, right? To, uh, to 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 presenting uh, your own uh, support study uh, previously using the stated method. Okay, so a good content of the result should present introductory context, really brief mention. Okay, what what is your, your focus on using the parameters, and then directly uh, go to summary of key finding of your data. In the result session, before that, you could do single parameters result, or you could combine uh, as a really have a big uh, category. Okay, for example, in, in my uh, biometric area, so normally I will put uh, physical uh, characterization is a one uh, big uh, so-called data presentation. And then I do have the uh, chemical uh, uh, data presentation and then a cellular biocompatibility result section. Maybe after that, it's like pathway uh, so-called uh, result section. So this is uh, how you need to so-called, uh, what I call it, construct a good result that people or reader or newbie in the field could really understand okay, the whole story from your article. Okay. Highlight observation that are most relevant. Okay. Uh, they want uh, uh, just uh, direct, uh, what you call it, uh, point. For example, is uh, this group A is really high, uh, for example, support in terms of cell proliferation, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, you, you, you can do some kind of pre, uh, what you call it, uh, pre like conclusion for that particular uh, result category or individual uh, parameters. Okay. So problem to avoid, uh, don't discuss, don't interpret your result, please. Okay, if the graph show high, high, okay, if your SM picture show there's a source, uh, just mention that. Do not interpret anything in the result section, okay. This is genuine, uh, the genuine section of our finding, so no need to add on no, no need to like say this one not okay this one okay that one you can like really uh, discuss in the discussion section okay make sure uh, label properly and then uh, do not uh, ignoring negative results sometimes it's really good maybe it's a good point a selling point for us to discuss in your particular field okay so in the discussion section so this is what we think it is okay so meaning that whatever we try to uh, uh, from the aim of the study, sometimes it's not really meet our our so-called uh, what you call it hypothesis, right? So you need to discuss further. So uh, in the discussion section, so present in depth, okay? You give some like certain a statement of a general finding for your whole uh, result previously, and then directly go to the important points that you want to sell. So in the discussion section, normally I I try to like make it uh, from narrow. And make it broader you know so that's why your selling point is really important okay so uh, later on i will show you from the title from the aim of study and then uh, for the method directly and go to the discussion will lead you until the conclusion is uh, people may understand meaning that um, uh, understand your whole study for your paper another one is like they is like really related each other okay 
it's really uh, really like really direct uh, point okay so no need to explain uh, something that really uh, you are not uh, studied okay in that particular uh, research for your paper sometimes uh, you are doing something for example cross linking degree but you are never did that in your particular uh, study in that paper so no need to explain that so you try to discuss whatever finding that you already presented in that paper okay and then as always uh, bear in mind every findings okay for your result you should have the uh, you need to discuss further and do comparison so sometimes the previous study will be like uh, comparable sometimes it's be like different right so you need to discuss further okay why they're finding like this why my finding like this is it your finding suddenly uh, uh, have sharp peak okay for the data but the previous paper doesn't have it but that's why you need to have like so-called be uh, better explanation on the discussion section so and then the hypothesis uh, a general claim or possible conclusion okay at the, maybe at the end of the discussion section it's, it's not really final conclusion for the discussion section okay problem to avoid uh, for the discussion section will be like do not waste entire sentence restated your result so do not repeat okay sometimes uh, i could see uh, authors right from the introduction and then uh, repeated in the discussion sometimes uh, whatever uh, written in the result section is already uh, is uh, yeah, repeated in the discussion section actually no need okay you you should uh, go deeper uh, uh, for example like uh, previously i mentioned to you right i categorize uh, the, the 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 result section so why uh, the findings become like this why are the people show like this so you need to discuss further and then you need to find supporting data supporting article uh, to support your findings is it agreeable or not okay if not why and then you need to explain further okay do not introduce new result in discussion as i mentioned uh, to you previously don't introduce any other parameters that you not really did in that particular paper they already stated right in the methodology and the result section so no need to introduce that okay just direct to the point concise brief explain whatever your findings in the in the result section okay don't over interpret the result if you're not really confident don't do that okay meaning that uh interpret whatever you can and then after that you can pass to your senior you can pass to the professor okay and then you can pass to your collaborators and uh, we can uh, they have their own uh, opinion uh, to have a good uh, discussion and then at last you have the best paper that cover all uh, authors opinion okay so last but not least uh, the conclusion section so mission accomplished so so th this one this one subjective uh, it depends on your uh, on the journal sometimes that i mentioned previously uh, either sometimes they want that really general conclusion that cover all parameters sometimes general one to have that really specific point that represent your output so uh, it depends you need to go further and, and look into like example uh, for the publisher from that journal okay problem to avoid for the conclusion failure to be concise remember uh, do not uh, write uh, ambiguous uh, sentence flowery sentence just direct to the point concise okay failure to comment on larger more significant issues uh, reveal problem and negative result and then failure to provide a clear summary okay sometimes you have the good data you have a good story but at last conclusion doesn't doesn't, doesn't refer to anything so it's, it's some sort of like uh, really uh, what, what authors try to uh, achieve for the paper basically so uh, if like this like academic editor or the reviewer see that uh, meaning that the uh, what you call it the the authors will not really understand okay the whole story of the paper from from their side is not okay uh, this one uh, an, an example i mentioned to you okay uh, this is my phd student first paper uh, what you call it uh, the uh, collagen uh, sorry uh, gelatin hydrogel basically so what I try, uh, what we try to do is like uh, to characterize this. Uh, I call it the potential of uh, jelly pin, uh, gelatin, and also uh, jelly pin hydrogel for the future use. Okay, for the wood dealing. So and then uh, in the uh, abstract, we did mention okay the current aim of the study. Okay, so I mentioned to you just now. Sometimes a bit difficult for, for us to avoid the abbreviation, right? Because the abbreviation will be like counting how many words. And we uh, and then our abstract have uh, limited words basically. So it depends on the journal's uh, requirement. Okay. And then this one is a conclusion for our study. Uh, we already indicate that uh, our gel uh, gelatin uh, crossing with the game will have excellent physical chemical properties and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So the introduction, 
because you deal with the Chinese Unilink. So you need to give some information for the people. What, what exactly happened? Okay, so what is your targeted tissue? What is your uh, so-called prevalence data? But in this paper, I, uh, I'm not really uh, uh, focused on the prevalence data. I just put like post standard uh, treatment that could, uh, that already been used, okay? In, in, in the, what call it the clinical practice. So, so I mean, I put skin and I put a gold standard uh, tissue product. So I mentioned about limitation that you want to cater using our proposed study, right? So we are trying to develop a smart uh, bioscaffold for the uh, cellular skin substitute. And then uh, what is a so-called your focus uh, design, okay? That uh, different with your gold standard treatment. So we try to uh, embark and develop the hydrogel itself, okay? And then uh, we go further for uh, uh, what material that we need to uh, uh, what call it uh, explore okay in this study so we are using the gelatin blah 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 okay as, as the concoction for the hydrogel and then this a method method if you have the uh, ethics approval please mention it okay uh, most of the uh, the paper su uh, submitted uh, to the general privilege that I reviewed uh, they are not really they have like in vivo study they have like a uh, primary cell study but they don't mention about the article so we are normally uh, as a, a review po uh, point of view we ask uh, editorial office to double check is it they have their own approval or not okay it's uh, the, the editor office decision okay this are material okay please uh, write uh, really details okay and please remember that all chemical reagents equipment should come with the details okay manufacturer city and also country this one really important okay and then for the result section okay uh, please make sure uh, the uh, so-called figures really clear and then uh, the graph already has showed the silicon value okay the figure legend mentioned uh, uh, silicon value uh, is it, is it 0 0.01 or 0 0.05 right sorry 0 0.001 okay so clearly mentioned okay because the figure legend will like really briefly mention what is your output that you yeah, that you showed uh, in the figure okay so the discussion I try to uh, what, uh, not really conclude I, I just make like uh, our overall finding, okay? Then I will focus on the polymerase within three minutes. That is our aim that we mentioned in the uh, previous article. So I discuss about the polymerization factors. What really uh, factors that really uh, connected with this polymerization are selling point. So from our parameters, we pull and then we discuss further. And then what is other, other paper findings and then we compare, is it have similarity or not, okay? Next, our selling point will be like uh, for the for the cutaneous application is like porosity. Okay, internet porosity is really important because we try to deliver something in the wound area without cell. So we should uh, uh, to to uh, highlight uh, what is the properties that encourage cells from native tissue can migrate in to your uh, biometric design. So that's why we go further for the internet porous structure and then we explain and then we will really look in in terms of the stability of our implant. Uh, normally we need to have like at least plus minus 14 days okay and then we uh, include the strength and then to see the degradation using enzymatic approach and etc okay so uh, in that origination paper sometime uh, you could do some comparison meaning that uh, whatever that almost similar uh, uh, the product design uh, to the uh, in the market so you could do that and then you could simplify in the table and then you explain and some of the uh, so-called journal or reviewer ask us uh, about the uh, what, what is your so-called challenges okay in terms of your uh, current technology and also the what I call it the uh, uh, the, 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 the effect okay uh, the effect uh, to the economy okay for your country or maybe worldwide and then uh, it's the conclusion uh, we just mentioned that again the three minutes uh, the polymerization to me is our selling point okay that people doesn't look through in detail so that's why we, we conclude uh, as a whole. And then we mentioned we achieve all the properties that needed as a, a we call injectable polymerization hydrogel. Okay. And then we put some like really uh, this so-called design will be like a promising, a promising candidate in the near future okay, on the shelf. Okay, the, the next topic I will I want to touch. So is it okay, 24? Okay. So uh, for the selection of suitable journals that are that, uh, given to me is a Q1, right? So uh, for everyone information, uh, I always put a Q1 journal in my list. Uh, I try my best because uh, I believe 
uh, worldwide, right? I mean, uh, journal have a lot, uh, maybe thousands, hundred thousand of P1 paper that uh, related with your field, maybe 1,000 or 2,000, okay, or more than that. So try to uh, read more papers from the references. You, you may know uh, the, the bundle or list of uh, potential uh, so-called journal. Try to make it list and then determine the impact of the journal and the publisher behind that journal. Okay, make sure the journal scope, the policies uh, really matching with your needs, okay? on that paper and check the general requirements and distribution so uh, you need you need to uh, maybe digging a little bit okay from that journal uh, how the evaluation of uh, so-called peer review has been have been uh, done in that particular journal so if you are really uh, see that that one is like really uh, what you call it suitable and uh, you could submit your paper on that particular journal so the main point now is like please check the instruction of authors. Sometimes the rejection because the technical knockout. So you are not really supply all the list uh, required uh, by the journal, okay, to be, uh, to, be, uh, to be submit and to be reviewed by the reviewer. So uh, my selection tools, normally I uh, try to cross section, okay, uh, all the so-called possible uh, journal that listed under uh, using uh, Elsevier, Journal Finder. And we do have Taylor and uh, Franz, uh, Francis, and then we have the Wiley and Springer Nature. So I try to cross match these four uh, so called uh, selection tool and see uh, which journal will be like high priority that suggested by, uh, by this uh, so called general selection tools. Okay. And then I will check through JCR. Okay. For example, this one is about material. So you could look into the detail of the journal uh, from Xavier. Okay. And then you could see the impact factor. Okay, uh, 2020 currently, okay, 12.4. And then you could see either this uh, journal, uh, uh, because the category eh, uh, for the journal impact factor, will be, uh, the rank will be like different for each category. So you need to check. Uh, so most of the time they will take the highest, uh, what I call it, category that uh, correlate with your uh, intended uh, uh, submitted paper. So this one uh, I, I took from the frontiers. So this one, uh, the, the, I think this year, uh, sorry, last year. So this is the frontiers, uh, the third uh, publisher, uh, okay, that high citation, okay. And then we have the SCS, number one, RSC, MDPI, Xavier, almost the same, 3.5, uh, the, the citation per article, okay. And then, uh, okay, next. Uh, like I mentioned to you, right? So you already uh, capture which journal will be will be uh, potential, will be the best suitable for your particular original paper or review paper. So try uh, to go to the website and uh, identify their performance in terms how how long it will check. Okay, it depend on your university, right? Sometimes they want really high uh, uh, what you call it high numbers of publication in a year, uh, but sometimes the journal is not really have a good performance. So, and then you need to check the APC. You can, you can see here biomaterial is like 4,000 USD. I'm not sure if it's university or uh, faculty probatan is uh, really support that. So, and then uh, you need to check the ed editorial board members and then the review board whatsoever. My advice is, okay, if you, uh, if you know uh, maybe uh, the well-known person in your field, okay, try to look uh, in their uh, previous publication, uh, the best one will be Google Scholar, right? So you need to just go through it and see, uh, is, is it that particular person that you know that you adore in your field is published in this particular journal? To increase the confidence level of the genuine, uh, genuine of uh, the, uh, the selected uh, journal. That's uh, my, my personal uh, step, okay, selection that I did. Because the, because the issue of predatory journal, et cetera, right? And also called the pub, uh, publisher. So only you, yourself, and your team, okay, and with your professor and your senior and your collaborators to decide which journal would be like, uh, appreciate, okay? And really suitable for your publication, okay? So my next step will be like, I will look into the uh, previous uh, published paper. I will look into the uh, top cited and latest published to see what is the current, what you call it, uh, current uh, topic or current gap that they are they're they trying to uh, fit it. So is it your study, all the parameters that you already write down is a fit with those like a uh, current scenario for the publisher from that particular journal, okay? So my last topic will be like uh, this one more towards like, uh, I don't, don't have really uh, the uh, specific uh, site for it, but we can discuss in terms of handling experience in submission and publishing in Q1. 
So uh, I normally uh, uh, if reject everyone, you know how 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 frustrated are you after reject, right? But sometimes journals that really uh, so called give a second chance. Okay, so rejection with a reconsideration. So uh, you could like really have the uh, reject rejected on that particular time, but you have another chance to resubmit. Okay, there's a 50 50. So if you improve further for your uh, paper, it could be high chance. Okay. Uh, if not mistaken, I sign is around 12 impact factor and volume is around uh, currently 4.9 impact factor. Okay, I think this are my almost uh, last slide. Okay, the, re the rejection metaphor. So I I, don't, I just want to deliver the the main point of the rejection. So rejection is always as a new as a new uh uh I I call it a uh, lecturer or researcher. So rejection is always happen uh, in, in, in my team's uh, life. So sometimes two times, sometimes eight times, okay, for example. And then uh, rejection should not demotivate you and your student and your team. You should improve it. Okay, you need to find the best one. If you, even though you improve from the previous uh, rejected uh, journal, they're still rejected. Okay, at the, at the next journal that you already, already submitted, right? So rejection should not lead you to downgrade your manuscript to Q2 to Q4, you know? So, Every time rejection, you should upgrade more to achieve uh, the Q1 uh, journal. You have a bundle of uh, other journals in Q1 in your specific uh, list, you know. So don't just simply, okay, ask yourself, okay, we just submit to Q3 lah, okay. Uh, don't do that. So discuss together, plan together to improve, to polish, okay. Rejection is not failure, you know. Rejection is a key of success in the publication in Q1. Okay. Rejection should not lead you to reduce or add more authors for better improvement. This one is subjective. Sometimes we need to add uh, because of the specific uh, uh, suggestion or maybe from the previous rejected uh, journal, right, from the reviewer. Maybe uh, uh, someone from the economy, someone from the like, so-called uh, engineering to put in, uh, have their own perspective for that paper. So we could add that. Okay. Uh, that's why I put subjective. Rejection should teach you the best way uh, to select suitable journal, uh, perfect cover letter and reviews comments. Okay. So which one is your type? So how you want to start write the uh, Q1 uh, paper? So either you, you plan to uh, just like using the sharpener or you can have using sandpaper or using, uh, like call it blades, or using the scissor. All can be sharpened, right? <laughs> but the thing is, uh, which way that you select? Okay, uh, for you to uh, uh, embark the Q1 uh, publication journal. Okay, so uh, for the whole paper, the introduction sets uh, the context, the result presents the content, and the discussion brings home uh, the conclusion. Uh, for us, for newbie, for all readers worldwide to understand our whole uh, gist. Okay, for the for the for the paper. So I want uh, to thank to my group basically. Uh, uh, they are diamond of uh, our uh, Q1 publication, uh, Functional Biomaterial Technology Research Group from CITAM. Okay, this is my contact information. I think that's all. Okay, thank you, Associate Professor Dr. Mohamed Fauzi, for this sharing session of the tips to publish in Q1 journals. So for Q&A session, we will perform the Q&A session during the forum as well. So as for now, I will pass the session to, to Dr. Chin Kok Yong. Uh, good day, ladies and gentlemen. So before we proceed to the scientific forum, may I invite Isa to share the QR code again for about three minutes. Let's take a break, please, for a few minutes for the break, and then uh, we'll come back for the forum in three minutes' time. For those um, participants who cannot scan the QR code, you can find their link to attendance in the chat box.
Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to begin our forum in one week's time. So just uh, take your time to scan the QR code or register your attendance using the um, using the form provided in chat box. Ladies and gentlemen, just let me check with our panelists. Uh, see whether they are here. I see uh, Dr. Fauzi here. Dr. Sukwai is here. I'm just checking whether uh, Prof. Tan is here as well. Prof. Tan, are you, away, uh, are you with us? I'm so sorry? What did uh, you uh, just say? Uh, yeah. I'm just checking whether you're with us or not. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So Thanks I for the invitation. Yeah. So I think all of the panelists are so this. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Scientific Writing Forum organized by the Department of Pharmacology, Publication Committee of SPI, and also YSCM. So I will apologize for the delay in the schedule due to technical reasons. And due to a scheduling conflict, I'm taking over the role of moderator from Dr. Nolisa Ibrahim. My name is Dr. Chin Kok Yong, or you know me better as Gabriel. The purpose of the forum today is actually to answer all your burning questions and problems in scientific writing and publications. So apart from the two speakers introduced earlier, we also have privilege to have uh, Prof. Uh, Dr. Tan Yok Ching, the Deputy Dean of Research Innovations of the Faculty of Medicine Affairs. Prof. Tan is also the editor in chief for the Malaysian Journal of Pathology and the political writers who have published 91 articles so far. We hope he can provide you with some insight regarding the publication process and decision making process from an editor standpoint. So without further ado, I think we shall begin our session today. Even the uh, moderator privilege, uh, I will be asking the first questions. So I know that um, we, are, we face a lot of publications uh, problems during our submission process. But in order to submit, we need to have a manuscript first. So my first question for the panelists is that, you know, despite our heavy, uh, busy uh, clinical teaching or new workload, where do you find time to write your paper? Okay, now we have uh, the head of a center here, so the policy. Maybe you can ask the policy, uh, where do you find time to read or real write yourself okay thanks dr uh gabriel uh, <laughs> that one is really a killer, killer question for me so uh yeah i think quite a long time uh i never have like my own uh writing paper okay uh, most of the time is like uh initiated by the uh student uh, our postgraduate student and uh uh, we, we embark with the review paper basically because the uh, COVID-19 pandemic last time, right? So we, we changed the original research paper to review. Uh, and then I think they learned a lot from the, uh, I think Dr. Gabriel and also uh, other team uh, that initiate the uh, so-called review writing, scoping, review whatsoever, right? So uh, normally me, myself, uh, just find time uh, after my, my child uh, go to sleep now, basically. So it will be start from uh, 10 to 11 p.m. And I always just like uh, uh, bombard and comment everything uh, to my students uh, first draft. So I always ask them to write whatever they can. Uh, they really understand uh, from the topic they already discussed previously. Uh, so uh, it's a take for me, it's like one paper, one week, I think to spend for the first draft. So. Uh, 
I do not have like specific criteria how to uh, <laughs> uh, so called teach a stu uh, my student itself, but normally I will not uh, demotivate them. So it, it happened to me before that uh, when my uh, so called uh, super super senior just like uh, what you call it, uh, try uh, remove everything. Okay, so uh, the first draft normally uh, we will give a leeway to them. Okay, how to do that? How to do that? How to do this? Okay, what what you what you need to add further? Okay, in terms of the improvement of the paper. Okay, most of the time will be like take two to four time cycle before we uh, submit to the uh, I mean fulfill the requirement to submit to the uh, journal. So uh, try if you ask me about the fine time. So I think academician work 24-7 basically. So uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, even weekend sometime maybe perayaan, right? So <laughs> we still need to have a uh, fine time. Sometimes general give us like uh, 10 days, okay, five days. They doesn't know that we have like a uh, Hari Raya celebration, the public holiday. They, they just ask us to do this, to do that. So yeah, with the, uh, the team uh, under, uh, understanding uh, the way how uh, my students and me and other collaborators uh, to, uh, uh, I would call it, to polish the paper. So I think it's workable within a month for everyone in the author, author list to be uh, give comment and improve uh, the first draft uh, from the student. Okay. Uh, that, that's so, yeah. so I think uh, our take is that um, while well, you had a squeeze time, at least one hour a day in quite a lot of patients, multiple round of uh, revisions using students' manuscripts. And we have been patient on students have the upper timer, and so we have to be patient and do not demotivate them. So let's ask the opinion from someone who is even busier. How would that we be? So where do you find time to read your students' paper? Oh, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Dr. Chin, for the questions. I feel like it's the difficult questions. Sometimes Sometimes I think I want 48 hours a day rather than 24 hours. 24 hours is not enough. So basically, I, I personally think writing time is after office hour. So during office hour, there's really no time for us to write. Uh, so many other things that needs to be done. And um, the time that I use to write is after office hour at night and also weekends. And sometimes even during holidays. It's the best time for us to write. As you know, writing sometimes can, can take a long time because it's a process. You need to have a thought process. And writing is like the telling a story. And uh, if you write halfway and then you stop, the process is gone. So you, you, you have to rethink back again. And I feel that is very tough. And uh, I prefer to have a, a long, long time where I can think and uh, continue to write. So once I stop, then uh, it's going to be quite tough. So I feel like best is to write after office hour. Um, the other thing is that the faculty is giving up this protective time for writing. So for those who really require additional time, then uh, they can always uh, ask for this one week protected time from the faculty, uh, which will be approved by the, the dean. Um, so you can go for that. Okay, then, uh, you. Uh, yeah. yes, okay. Anything to add on? Uh, just maybe, um, maybe the, the other thing to start writing is to create an outline. So you must have an outline first and then uh, start to write without thinking about the grammar. Start to write all your points. Think about grammar after you have completed uh, writing it. Uh, because if you think grammar while you're writing, then uh, the thought process is going to be gone and, uh, and, and you, you won't be able to write very fast. So you want to write fast and uh, Let's stop thinking about grammar. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Tan. So I'll take uh, from uh, Prof. Tan message is that sacrifice, or you have to sacrifice your afterwards hours. And then secondly, if you, uh, if you really need the free time, you can request from the faculty to give you writing holidays, about one week, to continue to work on your manuscript. And then thirdly, is to flush out all your ideas first before you think about editing your paper. Okay, so not going to ask Sokwan yet. We will reserve better question for Sokwan. Now I would like to invite the audience, if you have any questions, please unmute yourself and ask the question because now is the time to ask all your burning questions to our panelists or else you'll be shy. You can type your questions in the chat box and I'll read it for you. So any questions from the uh, audience?
while we are waiting, maybe we can also find uh, what's wrong with you find time to write. Are we lost you again, so fun. <laughs> no voice. No, we can, still can't sense you. The bad day also fun today. Uh, so far, I think you can uh, join the. Um, you can actually lower down your volume and join meeting using a handphone, so that you can speak through your handphone. So we have a question from the uh, audience: How do you stay energized when you do your writing? Maybe, uh, Prof. Would you like to say something about how to stay energetic while doing your writing? <laughs> Mm, I suppose, uh, thank you for the questions. I suppose, uh, suppose you need to be re re relaxed at that time when you want to write. So make yourself comfortable. Maybe if you like a cup of coffee, prepare a cup of coffee and uh, put down, prepare some snack that you like. And, um, and, and, and yeah, I, I, I don't know how to stay at the guys. <laughs> Oh, in the right thing, man. So, so I, I think that's the only thing that I can think of. So, first I'm suggesting a very prepare yourself a very conducted environment, please, and a hot cup of coffee or tea if not prefer, I think. Before you sit down and start writing, what about uh, how, uh, Dr. Howdy? Anything? <laughs> okay, I guess same just like uh, Prof. Tan. Uh, I would like to take a uh, coffee. Uh, black coffee and uh, actually uh, hearing music so basically but not sing a song just hearing music to ensure i uh, not really sleeping and then just write uh, something really stupid right for, for the student when <laughs> script so so these two things like normally i do uh, and sometimes uh, i do other work uh, to to uh, like that prof mentioned uh, to make it relax uh, but try to avoid the food it's like you will gain weight <laughs> okay so basically coffee it is it, my uh, favorite uh basically uh, to to stay energetic lah, uh, to write so, yeah so the how it was coffee smoothing music without lyrics and then what goes at the time then far sometimes you time to write yeah. <laughs> okay so um so far are you there yes can you hear me ah yes i can hear you now okay all anything, right. Anything to make you energize when okay. you're your reading? All right. Uh, your I think, <laughs> yeah, I think I think uh, Dr. Fauzi and Prof Tan actually give the perspective of uh, how uh, give other audience a very how how to say a, a rough idea on how busy we are as whether we are as a clinician or whether we are, we are a lecturer. But uh, I actually want to say that uh uh by thinking back what I have done previously when I was a student is that uh, I think it is very important to form a writing habit. So when uh, I'm sure that when uh, a student is uh, doing a research, uh, when you are doing, you are conducting an experiment during a uh, daytime, I mean, during the time that you are at your work, at, when you're at your lab, I think you should have certain time that uh, uh, when you have your incubation time, then you have certain break time for you when you are waiting for your experiment to, 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 to reach the next step. Then, then during that incubation time, that is a time that usually I squeeze uh, uh, some uh, things to do that I will do my writing there. So this is what uh, the, the practice that when I think back uh, during my student's life. So form a writing habit there, squeeze the time there, all right. When you have usually when we do a certain uh, uh, process for the uh, for the lab, it will have we will have certain incubation time for sure. So at all we have if you are doing animal works or you are doing cell works, there will be sometimes after you culture your cells, you you won't culture your cells from nine to five the whole day, right? You will have some uh, break time where you need to do your uh, writing concurrently actually. So if it, this you can able to uh, do your lab work together with your writing without uh, wasting any of your time. So of course, everything needs to come with together with your determinations and also dedications uh, 
uh, to find time out of your busy schedule. So uh, other things, I think you can also connect with your friends so that you all can uh, motivate with each other. So that, uh, uh, and then you have lesser job also because you can, uh, every, every, you and your friend can also contribute to the writing process so that you can uh, uh, have a more leisure time and anything you can also discuss with your friends and to find, a, a, to, to, to solve things out. So these are some of the, uh, the, the things that I apply, apply that applies to me. Thank you, Dr. Wong. So Dr. Wong gave us perspective from the students, whereby you can steal time from your experiments and also get uh, peer support from your friends to stay motivated during the writing process. Now, next question from the students. Uh, sorry, first one is this correct. Is there any tips or apps that can uh, help with the proofreading process or manuscript to ease or save supervisors with new time? So I think I'll put forward these, um, let's say, these questions also quite few are still um, fresh from graduation. So is there any proofreading um, app or tips that you have used to, so that your supervisors are not bothered by all the grammar mistakes. <laughs> all right, okay. Uh, uh, thank you very much for the question. I think uh, currently I will actually, actually, it, uh, actually, I to be frankly said, I actually not really using too many uh, uh, language uh, apps to to proofread my articles actually. Uh, the best, I think, I think uh, Microsoft Word sometimes is is considered a very good uh, because sometimes they will they will actually uh, detect certain grammatical error for you in your Microsoft Word, or you can actually install Grammarly, which uh, included which you can attach it together with your uh, together it will be attached together with your Microsoft Word, and you can use that. Or else, uh, if your departments have uh, buy certain uh, certain certain English editing uh, software, like I think previously is White Smoke, right? So uh, these are the uh, software that uh, you can use. So uh, I think the, the, the best, how to say, the best, uh, the best and easy way and also the most commonly used will be, uh, for me, will be uh, I'm using the Microsoft Word itself and also the Grammarly. Actually, uh, not much uh, English editing software that I'm using, actually. <laughs> Thank you, so What about uh, for the Is there anything you would recommend to students for uh, pro reading and English editing software? Yes, uh, I guess uh, using the Grammarly, uh, basically, they want the basic uh, that for me is suitable and acceptable. But be careful sometimes when they try to so called paraphrasing, it's a different meaning. So don't don't just really click and then they will correct the sentence. But you need to re reread again uh, to ensure the meaning is uh, should be the same. Okay. But uh, yeah, uh, through uh, Microsoft Office, I mean the the word uh, Microsoft Office word also is really helpful. They also help uh, sometimes detect the uh, grammatical error and then they try to uh, assist us uh, to recorrect. Uh, I'm using Gram Grammarly. Uh, I have the lifetime the Grammarly one, so <laughs> sometimes uh, it's really slow. <laughs> sometimes I just uh, keep it off because they try to uh, running every word right in, in the document. So sometimes it's hanging. Uh, uh, but be, for me, it, uh, you just write whatever you can after you finish the draft, and then you run the Grammarly. Try read uh, reread again. This one is good practice. So because we have first draft, like Prof Tan mentioned, just write whatever, uh, you broken English whatsoever, but make sure the meaning is there. So after that, you run through with the Grammarly or whatever apps, after that, you will read it again. So is it you really understand uh, on all the content of your manuscript? This is a so-called practice. Lah. Okay, practice always make perfect, right? Okay, Thank that's all from me. Uh, Prof Tan, anything from you? Mm -hmm. Nothing really much to add, but the same thing I recommend Grammarly and White Smoke uh, for uh, language editing. And perhaps uh, maybe, I'm not sure whether your proofreading includes plagiarism checker as well or not. If it includes, then you can turn it in uh, to use that for checking. So thank you, Prof. There's actually one question I want to, uh, I want to ask Prof. Because we, we have received a lot of uh, turning in requests. I mean, I received a lot of funding requests as, as a coordinator of publications. So um, I myself have a, a funding account. 
I don't, I'm not sure why they haven't canceled mine, but I have an account. For those students, um, even undergraduate students, how do they have, uh, get access to sending in, provided by, by the faculty or the university? Uh, for the faculty at the moment, um, one sitting online is holding one account of uh, turning in. So if you require some service, I think if you send it to SPI, uh, one sitting online will be able to help. Uh, to run the turn it in for that person for your students. Thank you, thank you very much for your useful information. So far, you know, I from SPI to help you to check the uh, similarity similarity index of your manuscript. Uh, for the Grammarly user, for the Grammarly user, uh, personally, I think that the free version is good enough. If you purchase Grammarly account from Shopee or Lazada, be careful. Do not upload your manuscript to the Grammarly website for checking. Do not upload your manuscript to the Grammarly website for checking because your manuscript will be visible to other people. Okay, just use it as your word mark link, that's all. So we move on to the next questions. Um, well, this is the top one. Any tips to overcome writer's block? You write and you hang. So how do you overcome writer's block? Uh, maybe Dr. Pauzi would like to answer that. Uh, sorry, I, I really didn't get uh, what, what does that mean? <laughs> oh, That's the right. term of what? Right, the blog means that I write and write and write suddenly I'm writing <laughs> discussion, suddenly I can't I can't think of what to write already. What what to what okay. to, how to continue? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I think uh, it's always happened to everyone, right? Uh, but again, um, as I think Prof Tan mentioned, did mention just now, right? So the outline, <clears throat> I mean the outline, the backbone of the uh, the whole story of your uh, article should be there. So uh, that that is really, uh, uh, what I call it, uh, the, the key point of uh, uh, original research paper or review paper should be not really uh, deviate from our main focus. So that's why you should have this uh, backbone uh, and then uh, whatever you call, uh, okay, discuss with a supervisor, okay, I do have this, this data. Okay, I want to write this review, blah, blah, blah. What is a subtopic, okay? Uh, what is a kind of point that I need to discuss, blah, blah, blah. So when you have those complete, uh, I call three, uh, okay? Uh, okay, uh, and then uh, you need to put aside, okay, from your main manuscript uh, writing template. So every time you want to write, you need to refocus again, whatever uh, so-called the backbone that you already discussed with your supervisor, okay? Uh, that, that's always uh, I uh, encourage students to do that. And most of the time, uh, I think this year we try to uh, more publish in terms of original research paper because uh, previously pandemic COVID-19, right? so all the review paper, I think so can have more than 20 review paper. <laughs> okay, so that is the time for us to publish original research paper uh, because already quite some times. Um, yeah, uh, meaning that uh, you need to always discuss with your supervisor. If you have the so-called maybe mental block, whatsoever block that uh, uh, forbidden you to go further for your whole manuscript, uh, please do something that you you really like, <laughs> your favorite thing. Okay, for example, if uh, for example like me, if I I saw my my student first draft is really make me mental block, I will go to take coffee. I just uh, uh, hear any songs that really uh, what you call it. Uh, 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 try to refresh my my uh, my mind. So I try to not really hush uh, to the first draft of writing paper I mentioned to you, uh, because uh, we that's our responsibility how to educate them. Okay, if on the first draft you already so called uh, what you call it uh, uh, the, the the good English will be like you chant us everything. So meaning that whatever idea from the student will be like diminished. So it's not really, uh, for me, it's not really ethical in terms of point of uh, view as a author. So you should educate them with the right, uh, like call it guideline, okay? So the, the, the what I call it, the backbone, at uh, the backbone just, uh, just now is the really important to guide both of you, supervisor and also student. So uh, the improvement always there. So that's why T4 cycle is common thing to, uh, uh, to produce uh, a good, uh, I just mentioned good, eh? it's not really excellent. I don't have any uh, really, uh, 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 what I call it, tremendous experience, but uh, I try to provide a good uh, so called uh, quality of the so called Q1 paper. So th that is our aim basically to embark in the uh, publication, what I call it, hub. 
that's all. Uh, the thank you very much. Thank you, Alvi. So the pitch is that uh, negotiate with supervisors, uh, really uh, a backbone on how, the draft outline on how to write a data phrase. And you are really stuck, I just walk away for a while. You know? Just, uh, I don't know, do some gardening, you know, take some walk in the park before you come back to your ministry. Anything from Sukhoi? Okay, I think uh, I, I'm quite agree with uh, Dr. Fauzi, but uh, just a little bit uh, additional things. Yeah, so the changes of environment is very important also somehow, because it's sometimes we are as a, uh, as a writer, as a write, um, the, the person writing for a manuscript, uh, definitely you will get a, a writer's block. So you suddenly you can have no ideas on what to write anymore. That, but uh, like, for example, you are writing in your room or in your office, so you will start to get uh, uh, later, later on uh, slowly, then you, you have like writer blog and you don't have ideas on what to write. Try to change the environment, all right? You maybe for now, I think you can uh, try to get, uh, maybe you can go to a nice cafe out there, enjoying your coffee, a, a cup of coffee for SRA for students. Uh, you can take a coffee there and then you can start, stay there and do your writing there. I think by changing the environment, you can definitely have uh, some ideas on writing. And then the second tips that maybe can help you is that if you are getting, uh, apart from uh, relax your mind and also relax your mind, and also yourself, all right? You can also try to get a, a related article. I mean, a related, uh, let's say, for example, you're writing on review article, then you get a related review article, read through one, just read once, just roughly read once, go through once. Definitely, I'm sure that you can get something out of there. Uh, this is something that um, applies to me, so I'm not sure whether it applies to you. So, uh, of course, if I'm re doing a research article, so whatever, what are the points that you are currently doing and you get stuck of it, you find a similar article, you just read it. Not necessarily you have to read it in very detail, but you could try to read it and you should get something out from there. Okay, so these are some of the tips that works on me. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, so Kwan. So the tips on so Kwan is that firstly, um, for read the article to see how people approach the uh, topic, and then second thing, the switch of environment, simulate your brain. Okay, anything from Prof Tan to add on on how to overcome writer's okay. block? I think Prof Fauzi and Dr Wong has already mentioned everything that is um, supposed to do. So if I have a top block while writing, um, I will do the same thing. I will stop writing, not wasting my time there already. Maybe go for a jog or exercise or doing something relaxing. And uh, very good um, things that you brought up uh, by Dr. Wong is, yeah, you go for, uh, to look at articles related to what you're writing now. And uh, you may get ideas from there, which you can reference and um, you may continue to write from there. Yeah, I, I would uh, go for that. So thank you for that. Another question from the um, students, I think the new students, there are a few questions actually. Uh, firstly, is Killboard a good, uh, tool for paraphrasing. So, um, Qbot is actually an online tool for paraphrasing. Uh, my take is that uh, Qbot uh, can help you paraphrase, paraphrase, but then Qbot do not really understand your sentence. So, you give the idea how to paraphrase, but it's up to you to come up with the final sentences. Do not copy paste directly sentences from Qbot into your manuscript. Have a look first and decide how to paraphrase. It's just a suggesting tool, but it's not a definite tool that can understand the English. Second thing is that I think we can pose this a question to Prof Tan. Is there, um, is there any way for researcher to publish in Malay scientific article? Well, thank you for the questions, uh, Dr. Chin and uh, uh, Mohamed Latif. Huh? So I think it depends on the, which journals you want to publish in. So if the journals is in English, then there's no way you can uh, publish it in Bahasa. So it depends on which journal you want to publish. I'm not sure whether this is what you're asking, but um, so to me, it is depending on which journal. So if the journal is English, then um, and, and and then you have just have to write in English in order to get it accepted. Otherwise, it won't be accepted. Um, so, the, the, I think that if the question is whether you need to publish in Vasa or not, then 
depends on um, whether you are looking for promotions or not. Uh, for Faculty of Medicine and or UKM, one of the criteria for promotion is to publish your articles in Vasa. So you must publish, I think, one or two articles in Vasa. So, so you have to choose a, a journal that is publishing in, uh, in BM. Like, for example, Science Malaysia, if I'm not mistaken, they accept um, publications in uh, Vasa. Uh, so, so that that is that is the the journals you can target. I'm not sure whether that answer your questions or not. Thank, Thank you, Dr. So, if um, Latte has other questions, you can type in the uh, chat box. So, we still have uh, over uh, over ninety participants. So, do you have anyone at any burning question you want to ask our panelists today? Because we have a rare opportunity to gather. Uh, people who have been publishing a lot uh, in the field. So you have any questions is the time you put for your questions. Do not waste this uh, opportunity. So if you do not have a question yet, let me ask another question to the panelists. Uh, as a beginner writer, as beginner writers, the, the, um, the failure that we uh, how do I say that we are afraid the most is death rejections, a rejection without peer review. So maybe for example, at this standpoint, how should the authors avoid death rejection? Uh, questions to me, Dr. Chin? Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the questions. Uh, very tough question. So um, actually, I'm also an editor, so sometimes I reject people without going through review too. Um, so don't give up. Uh, that's what my, my, um, my call is. Don't give up. Uh, look at the reasons why you get uh, editorial rejections. Editorial means it doesn't even go through review. So it was rejected straight away without getting any comments back. So, so you can look into, um, first of all, whether the, your articles is in line with the, that particular journal or not. That is one of the first thing that uh, you'll get rejections straight away without uh, looking through at it. Because if you're publishing something like, so mine is a pathology journal, if you publish something like truly clinical without any pathology input at all, then uh, it will be rejected because it doesn't make sense at all because the readers are all pathologists. And, um, and, and, and if you publish something that's very clinical, none of the pathologists are interested in looking at it. So you, you will get rejected without even uh, going through the comment. Um, so, so look at uh, whether your what you have submitted is the right journal or not. And, um, and then don't give up, just continue to submit because uh, it depends on a lot of factors. If the journal has already got a lot of articles already, even though your articles is very good, your articles may get rejected also because they just don't have enough space to publish everything. So uh, don't give up. Maybe it's not because your article is not good enough. It's because of many other factors. Perhaps others can add on. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Tan. Uh, Audi, any death rejections experience? <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> uh, it's a lot. A different journal. Uh, I think three, four times. Uh, yeah, as uh, Prof. Tan mentioned, uh, it's the many factors that sometimes you're not really aware, uh, basically. But uh, if you think that journal really uh, suitable for you to uh, submit it, I have another way. Normally, I will email them first. So meaning that uh, with this particular uh, title and also extract, is it suitable uh, with your journal or not? So uh, I think around uh, four to five days, they will respond to you. So meaning that, okay, it's quite good. It's relevant with this, this, this uh, at the moment. So you may uh, submit, blah, blah, blah. So at least, at least uh, in terms of like scope, in terms of like uh, your abstract, quite, for me, quite okay lah, if they respond like that. So meaning that your abstract doesn't have uh, the, the, the thing that I mentioned in the slide just now. Uh, so, so initial technical knockout will not be there lah, basically. So at least, at least uh, they will pass through in, uh, until the peer review. Uh, punya, uh, kind of process. Uh, so that's another way to do that. Uh, but again, as I mentioned in the uh, previous uh, talk, uh, please do uh, digging more in terms of uh, the aims and scope and the particular uh, so-called maybe uh, sometimes 
just cook or their aim is really general, right? But sometimes they also have the least of special issue. So there's another way how to uh, go into that journal. So you could write to that uh, particular journal and then maybe when you submitting the paper, you could select the relevant basically uh, from the special issue. Uh, I guess special issue doesn't have, uh, doesn't meaning that you have like special, uh, what call it, treat. No. So it's just like how to uh, so-called uh, to, to uh, initiate uh, the submission to be success until uh, the editorial uh, desk. So, uh, and for sure, please read through all the author's uh, guideline, basically, uh, to avoid the technical knockout, okay, in terms of like, uh, what I call it, the, uh, the, the, the jargon things and then the ambiguous sentence whatsoever from your main uh, so-called backbone that is like uh, your title itself, your abstract itself, and then you, your figures, okay? Sometimes they just go through your figures. Oh, this line is like so called blur. It's no scale bar. Sometimes it's no significant difference. Your figure legend is really bad. So they're just like directly uh, rejected. So I believe, uh, yeah, Prof Tan maybe have a lot of experience. There's a certain factors. I think from the main uh, article, they will look through first. Uh, it's like, like first uh, very fast uh, screening. Sometimes it's re rejection within two hours. <laughs> <laughs> really high impact channel. So uh, yeah, sometimes they just like reply us uh, politely. Or oh, we have uh, a lot, a thousand of paper, blah, 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 <laughs> uh, without any comment. So we, we don't know how to improve, right? So again, uh, the way before you submit to next journal, please dig in further. So try to uh, take whatever uh, already recently published paper that could like almost similar with your intended uh, submitting paper. So try to relook in terms of how the way, how their style to write uh, in that particular uh, so-called high impact journal or Q1 uh, journal. Uh, that, that's my comments. Thank you, Paul. So I think Dr. Wong would like to add on. In terms of avoiding test checking. Um, yeah. So if like for me, uh, I think uh, other uh, panels which really mentioned the uh, uh, the, the point just now, just a little bit, a slight, uh, a bit only to add on is that, uh, like, let's say, for example, you, you need to find the uh, right journal to submit. Let's say, for example, sometimes there is a, a, a criteria that a certain journal actually uh, just uh, accepting review article by invitation only, but you are submitting your review article to that particular journal. So for sure, you will encounter that rejection without uh, regardless to whether your re your review article is good or not so there is uh, some of the uh, that there will be some uh, criteria for that i mean some journal actually have that particular criteria for that okay so if everything is all right then you should not uh, if if there's nothing wrong with your manuscript uh, apart from the technical if you you are make sure that your your the technical things of your manuscript is all right then just don't give up and try another uh, journal again so that's only from me thank you very much so uh, from the page of panelists that be familiar with the journal that you want to submit to, knowing the scope and also the author guidelines. And uh, most importantly, have a decent paper, have a decent paper to guarantee you to avoid test rejections. And also, because we have been talking turning in just now, make sure that you screen your manuscript through turning in to avoid turning kernel up due to high similarity index. Some of the journal have very strict requirement for similarity in that even 20% would, would lead to rejections. So for which members scan, uh, uh, scan your manuscript to the interest before submitting. So while we are waiting for the questions from the um, audience, let me continue to ask some difficult questions. <laughs> so uh, Dr. Fabi, just now I heard that you have a manuscript being rejected eight times. Is that true? Yes. Uh, the, the one that I showed in the slide is like uh, eight times rejection uh, before. So how do you, you know, when you're rejected so many times, and the script was rejected so many times, how do you, how do I say? First thing is to keep yourself students motivated to continue to submit. <laughs> or yes. is there, you no? Know, when your student asks, is there any point to continue the submission? How do you respond? <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, basically it's uh, almost uh, it's a hectic, uh, what I call it, uh, process. Uh, when you submit, we need to change all the template and then submit again, rejected. 
Okay, uh, so mo most of the rejection is like uh, really not common in terms of the novelty of the paper, basically. Uh, uh, yeah, so, sometimes the dimension is like really uh, receive a lot of papers, okay, and then uh, some of the journal is like uh, there's uh, they have like editorial or academic editor uh, comments. Sometimes uh, they, they just pass over to like maybe two reviewer and then uh, we do have the uh, so-called comments. But whatever comments that are provided in your uh, previous rejected journal will not uh, sometimes suit with other journal, you know. So it's like keep, uh, keep uh, uh, what you call it, revising, revising. So yeah, uh, sometimes students really demotivate. Uh, but uh, some of some, some of the students uh, really think that so we need to remove this, we need to add this more. Uh, I guess not really. So whatever we have is like within the scope that you already mentioned in the article. Uh, but again, uh, we need to like uh, really uh, check the current so-called gap or the current selling point that people already uh, I call it publish. Uh, your, for, for your own expertise, you know, uh, expert field. So you need to read through the current scenario. Sometimes uh, this like so-called uh, editorial office doesn't uh, see uh, the, what you call it, uh, that's why I mentioned the eight like uh, point, right? Boring, you know? Sometimes there's no like, uh, uh, what you call it, a uh, key point that you need to sell for, the, for your manuscript, even though when you compare with other publishers, with the same journal, almost the same. Sometimes you do, you, you did, uh, uh, we call it tremendous work compared with them, but they already published. So uh, th this is the way how we improve then uh, before we try to uh, what we call it initiate the submission uh, to that particular journal. And yeah, the the yeah the, the I think the nine one should be okay. <laughs> so yeah, still the same with the different reviewers with different opinion comments. <sighs> Ah, that's why I mentioned to everyone that uh, publication, uh, published paper is like really subjective. <laughs> so even, even you know, you have your own system to do this, to do that, when you submit F or on that like 10 different reviewers, they will have their 10 different opinions and, and comments. So uh, yeah, be strong. So I guess we, we could publish that, okay? Until uh, any journal that really appreciate your work, it should be there. So this what happened, uh, even though the other paper also like, really rejected, but at last, uh, within two years, it's already 100 over uh, citation. So meaning that you need to find uh, like some journal that really appreciate your so-called point or gap that you try to uh, bring in that uh, particular paper. So that's why we hear from you is that we have the patience, we have to be strong, big face, and never give up. I hope that's true. <laughs> Lesson I learned from you. Uh, so, Kwan, any any experience in multiple rejections? Uh, how do you deal with it? Um, uh, multiple rejection. Yes, I think yes. That of course everybody <laughs> experienced that. So, uh, people that never experienced that is, I think, is impossible unless you are just you you haven't you haven't submit uh uh too too many uh, article out there. So. So you haven't you haven't experienced in it. So for sure, everybody will uh, experience in it. But try to uh, be positive, just like uh, well, previously the you Fauzi know, has said. So uh, I think it is very important to instill a very positive attitude to the uh, whether you are students, whether you are lecturers, uh, anyone, anybody else. So in very important to instill a very positive attitude because sometimes um, we never know what will. Sometimes we never know. know what will happen later on to that particular article even though maybe there are multiple rejection it could be the highest citation of, of your articles you never know what will happen or even because of your uh, uh the positive attitude of never give up sometimes you never know what will actually waiting for you in future sometimes prestigious awards may be waiting for you so make that at, as your motivations to you because uh, and then sometimes uh, don't do not mind to do something extra because I know there's a lot of work. Uh, uh, do uh, resubmitting back the the uh, the manuscript that is being rejected, but you never know what will happen in future. So maybe certain award is actually waiting for you. So uh, make that as a uh, uh, make that as a motivation to you. Never give up and uh, have a good. Uh, attitude in terms of right, uh, learning and also writing. 
Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Rukwan. So we post this and we'll give up. Anything to add on for, uh, for time? Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, I think uh, both uh, Prof. Fauzi and Dr. Wong has already mentioned, never give up. I think that's the most important point uh, to note. Um, so if you look at it, it's multiple rejections or multiple major revision is, uh, is, is two things. So if multiple major revision, then you look, in the, look into the comments and see whether the comment is constructive or not. Uh, constructive then, um, which will make your project even better, then uh, you, you should work hard on it and uh, try to resolve the particular comments that's given by the reviewer. Um, I, I have recently got one that I would like to share is uh, the reviewer wants me to even add in more cases into the uh, into my study and uh, we did that because uh, we think it's the right um, decisions to make. So it depends on the, how constructive it is. Some, if it is not so constructive, like uh, Prof. Fauzi was saying, sometimes different reviewer has different opinion and so on. And uh, if it is not so constructive and it's based on their own opinion only, then maybe it, you have to rebut. You have to argue and, uh, and see what's the reviewer think of your own opinion as well. So, um, so it depends on a lot of factors. So if, if complete multiple rejections, uh, then uh, one of the things that I would recommend is that maybe bring your manuscript to a senior person. Ask the senior person to go through that particular manuscript and see what's the flaw in that thing. Maybe there is some flaw that the editor is, uh, or the reviewer is um, uh, having a huge issue in it that they cannot even ask for a major revision. They are rejecting reje rejections it uh, outright. So perhaps that is the one thing you need to do. Bring it to even your, your, your friends and have a little, quick look at it and see, um, is there any flaw inside the manuscript? That's my suggestions. Okay, thank you, Prof. Tan. So uh, the suggestion is that, um, the additional suggestion is to have a look and uh, consult, I mean, consult senior members of, uh, of the field or department members to have a look at the manuscript to improve it to avoid next rejections. So the next question by the audience, actually we need the input from Prof. Tan. Uh, what are your opinions on publishing, proceeding or e-proceeding? I, I guess it means that you want to publish a result as proceeding before you publish a real paper. Is there harm chance of the real paper? Thank you. Uh, I'm supposed to answer that. So uh, pro proceeding uh, is a, is a very, it's actually a short full articles that is peer review also. Um, I would actually recommend go straight to a full articles if, if it is possible. Uh, don't go for proceeding. Proceeding carry less weight, weightage as compared to a full articles. Um, if, if you want it to be quickly up um, your particular findings so that people don't go ahead of you uh, before you publish it, then you might want to go for proceeding, but I would advise to go for straight into a full articles. I don't know uh, opinions from others. Um, Dr. Maozi, Dr. Sokwan, do you have uh, experience publishing proceeding before? Uh, yes, I try to avoid that. <laughs> so, so basically, uh, this is a personal judgment. Uh, so meaning that you need to see the weightage of uh, your uh, particular, uh, what you call it, result or output that you uh, plan to publish for the proceeding, right? But uh, if you guess that uh, maybe uh, with the additional, um, maybe another two or three data, it could be like full paper, I guess, just uh, plan for the full paper. And as usual, try to Q1 first. Go to Q2, Q3, Q4, okay? Uh, don't give like any reason that, oh, I can't publish in Q1, but try. Uh, I think uh, Proton, uh, right? We do have a lot of Q1 journals, right? But uh, the way we need to find the right journal that suit with your particular aim and scope for that particular paper, so uh, and the whole story. So that's why uh, you, you need to know the what you call it the gist of the every journal. Sometimes they have their own so-called team uh, at that at that moment. So they're not really particular to uh, 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 to embark with those uh, team that uh, in your paper. So that's why you need to really more sensitive to digging more information before you submit to that particular journal. 
Okay, yeah, they really doesn't want to reject your paper, but they have their own so-called, uh, what I call intent, intention, right? To how to serve the readers worldwide, that particular uh, so-called, uh, uh, like I mentioned, team or maybe a particular uh, uh, niche or research area. So uh, that, that's my opinion, Dr. Gabriel. Thank you, Kalvi. Uh, so, Kwan, anything? I think uh, for me, uh, it will be the same thing. Lah. Nothing much for me to add on uh, regarding the proceeding. I think I'm uh, in line with the, uh, the the point from other panel as well. Yeah. So thank you, Sokwan. So is there any more questions from the um, audience? You can always unmute yourself and uh, shout out your questions. Anything? If no, I would like to ask some questions on predatory journal. So um, I think for it is a huge problem nowadays with a lot of predatory journal out there. They are sending us fun email every day to invite us to submissions for submissions. So is there any way you can detect whether a journal is predatory or not? I think we'll give this uh, to Prof. Ben. I'll continue. Oh, yeah. You get giving questions, which is difficult. <laughs> uh, pre predatory journals is um, so. How do you define the predatory journals? Actually, the predatory journals, um, even in the bell list, uh, predatory journal listed. Uh, uh, some of them are frontiers, and um, and then uh, so frontiers have impact factors. So some so so it depends. To me, it depends on the. The, the journal itself. So you cannot look at the publisher. So the, some publisher, um, although they are open access and, and you, you need to pay a lot of money. However, some of the, art, the journals are doing so well that they gain citations so much and they have impact factors in, and they have been, if, if they have impact factors, which means that they have been screened by the WOS, Web of Science, the team of Web of Science will go and look at their journals whether they publish it regularly, whether they have reviewers there to look at their journals or not, articles or not, and they, um, uh, uh, they have citations or not, and they have contributions for every part of the world. Uh, the reviewers are coming from every part of the world. So, so those journals are definitely up to the standard. So journals that has impact factors, so index in WS, index in Scopus, those are all um, considered as journals that is reputable. So I personally recom recommend is that don't go for journals that is not indexed by WOS and Scopus, even if it is in Frontier. If it is Frontier and if it's not indexed, don't go for it. So go for only journals that's indexed in WOS and Scopus, and especially if they have a very, very high impact factors. Um, so, so if you're talking about MDPI, MDPI, a lot of us publish there. It's an open access. It's a highly paid journal. And if you look at it, not every single journal is, has an impact factor. Some journals don't. So don't go for the journals that do not have an impact factor. It only goes for those that have an impact factor. And if you are very, very confident, I would suggest go for a journal that is non-paying at all, but has a high impact factor. Like uh, in my field, one of it is Placenta. Placenta is a Q1, Q2 journal that is non-paying. The only drawback is that it is the, the rejection rate is really, really high. It's like 90% rejection rate. And um, it takes slightly longer. It, it makes sense because those journals doesn't require any money to maintain. And uh, there's no, they don't push in money to help reviewer, they don't push in money to have a group of people that look at the journals. Whereas those MDPI, Frontiers, BMC, they have, they have high publication fees and this money are given for reviewers. If you, if you review, you get 100 uh, reduction from the subsequent submissions. And uh, there's a team of people that helps to make things run smoothly. And you, you get pub your paper get published in, in a month or two. So that's why people go for the open access and paid journals. But if your article is really good enough, go for the non-paid high impact. That's my take. Okay, 
Thank you, Gokhan. So I think data factor and also indexing in WOS and also uh, Scopus will be a good indicator that the journal is not uh, predatory. Is there any take from uh, the policy and the sequence? How to avoid predatory journal? <laughs> I do, hi. <laughs> it's a really tricky question. <laughs> uh, Okay, uh, I agree with Prof Tan, but the thing is, depending on your institution, faculty requirement, if they don't want to see on the numbers, don't go to paid journal, that's all. So, meaning that we have other uh, uh, reputable journal that uh, has subscription and also uh, paid, uh, sorry, open access, right? Uh, by the way, uh, because the uh, so-called, uh, yeah, one of my faculty will be to achieve the KPI to help uh, our university to be uh, uh, to be at a high, high good rank in terms of citation, etc. So, no choice, I guess. So, uh, open access would be the best uh, for us to increase uh, the citation also because everyone could like really access to that paper. By the way, uh, yeah, still self judgment. So, you need to uh, check in terms of uh, the publisher impact, basically. Uh, at least the top 20 uh, of the publisher, you need to check within that uh, so called publisher for the journal. And again, like Prof Tan mentioned, you, you need to evaluate the journal itself. So meaning that all the editorial board that I mentioned uh, just now in the in the in the talk that uh, if you know someone that really uh, core person in your field uh, publish on that journal or not, and then see the trend in terms of the uh, yeah, but I I could say that uh, even from MDP I have like only only five to six uh, relevant journal uh, in Q1 for for me to uh, publish. So, uh, and currently it's really difficult. I guess even if people talk about the MDPI, they learn a lot. So currently it's a bit difficult. And yeah, uh, I, I also one of the so-called uh, review board, uh, one of the uh, Q1 general paper from the MDPI. But yeah, they are really strict basically. Uh, but uh, again, uh, try to, what I call it, uh, judge in terms of the general uh, reputation. It's not the publisher itself. So that, that is my... Uh, my advice and uh, another way don't really caught easily for the uh, email that you receive so you need to check so sometimes predatory journal is just send, send like really uh, what I call it uh, not really so called messy but it's not really professional uh, email so and then uh, you could check really directly for uh, Clarivate and JCR and maybe uh, the W uh, sorry the Scopus is it this uh, kind of like journal uh, exists or not and then see the performance last five years. If it's really new, so you need to check, is it uh, this one uh, in terms of issue? Is it, uh, it have a high opportunity to publish on that particular journal? If not, maybe again, like Prof Tan mentioned, the high, high risk, uh, high percentage of rejection rate, uh, most of the uh, high impact journal. For me, let's start maybe from three or four impact factor. It's really, uh, 75%, I guess, 85% uh, rejection, sometimes 85 yeah. The top one, 12, 10 will be like maybe 97. <laughs> so it's a bit difficult to say. It's depending on the performance of the journal. Uh, so I believe you, you could just uh, Google it, uh, what, what's the criteria to do that. But as a as an academician, as a student, so you should do, 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 do the like, uh, what I call it, blasting, uh, screening through that particular uh, platform. Uh, what I call it, Scopus and also the uh, Clarivate uh, JCR for WIS to, to see the potential journal. So thank you, Dr. Pauti. So do not trust the email that you get. Always check for the indexing of the indexing of the journal and have a look at the editorial board to see whether there are reputable scientists on the board or not. Anything from Sokwan? Just a bit to add on for the characteristics of predatory journal, maybe there are, uh, usually there are, there are little or no peer review process. So you can see that if there is no peer review process that it should be a predatory journal. So, and then uh, of course, uh, like uh, Dr. Fauzi mentioned, it is aggressively campaigning for authors to submit articles and uh, or to serve as editorial board. Uh, so these are some of the uh, characteristics of the predatory journal. And sometimes the predatory journal will actually mimic the website style and also name of the established journal. So be careful with it. Uh, so there are also no proper editorial board. They are changing their, their charges for publication and also they are misleading indexation. So or fake impact factor that is uh, uh, appear in the website. So make sure, do make sure to check properly. 
And then uh, the journal may disappear after a few years. So these are maybe uh, some of the characteristics of the predatory journal. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, regarding the impact factors, uh, audience, or, or especially students, do remember that uh, you can only recognize impact factor from journal citation report. We do not recognize impact factor from other institutions or other agency. We don't even really recognize impact factor from Nago, which is quite uh, famous as well. So we you can only recognize impact factor and also ranking from journal citation report. So we, we have last five minutes, uh, audience, do you have any more burning questions? Do not wait, it's golden opportunity to ask our um, panelists here. I think, if no, I'll ask last question to confirm. What happened if I accidentally uh, submitted to a preliminary journal and the manuscript was accepted and people are de demanding me to pay now? <laughs> so thank you for the questions. Uh, so if um, so, this this is um, an issue that uh, can happen to anyone. Okay, um, and uh, my. My recommendation is if you have accidentally and uh, submitted to a predatory journal note, um, and uh, if it is in the review stage, review stage not yet accepted, write to them and say that you want to withdraw the articles. If it has been accepted, don't pay for the article processing fee. Write to them and say that uh, you want to withdraw, and uh, you wouldn't want to. Um, associate or pay the APC uh, and um, do not publish the paper, write to them and say that. They might say that this has been reviewed and uh, is taking up your, your our time and you might have to pay for some article processing fee. Then you have to look into whether the uh, journal website has that particular clause or not. If it has that particular clause, then you have to pay that article uh, money already. But it doesn't have, then you can uh, uh, write to them saying that it is not um, stated and therefore you are not going to pay for that particular thing. If it has been published, then um, actually that will be a, a, a lot of trouble and uh, probably you won't be able to do much already. But um, my say is um, do not publish in predatory journals. So if you publish in predatory journals, that doesn't give you any points in terms for publications, uh, promotion, I mean, uh, and, um, and it will even um, uh, de demote your uh, reputation by associating with the predatory journals. So um, yeah, I think, is that answering the question? I think this will help a lot of research out there. Okay. So I think we are nearing the end of our sessions. I just want to confirm again last time. Audience, do you have anything to ask? Dr. Chin, maybe uh, I want to say that one last thing is yes. if you have issues trying to know whether the journals is something you uh, should publish in or not, uh, what you can do is you can um, write to any of us uh, here, the panel and also Dr. Chin as well. Uh, we, we can actually do the inside JCR screening of the journal for you before you, uh, you submit to the particular journals. So we'll be able to tell you whether this journal is actually indexed by JCR, w, WOS or not, and so what's like impact factors and uh, its core count. So don't submit uh, if you're not very certain and like uh, what Dr. Chin has been saying, impact factors, there are a number of bodies that gives impact factors, not only JCR. Um, Scopus give his own impact factors called site score, and that is not counted here for our university. And Shimago has his own uh, impact factors as well. So don't just look at the journal's impact factors that is stated in the website. It might be it's not a JCR. Okay, thank you, Dr. So thank you, Prof. Uh, actually, mind to uh, remind the audience as well. <laughs> that if you really have a problematic um, manuscript, uh, you can actually email me as the Panera in the time and we'll get, I, will, I will get the publication community to uh, help you to improve the manuscript. 
And also, if you have any queries about publication and public writing, feel free to email uh, me or any members of the publication committee as well. We'll try to solve the issues or discuss or uh, report them on how to help you to solve the issues as well. That's what we can help as the publication committee under the uh, umbrella of the end. So, any, any questions from the audience? If it is no, then we are about to stop the session here. If you still have more valid questions, you do PM me to request a similar session in the future. And better still, fill in the form provided in the chat box and let us know how you think about the event and what kind of sessions or talk that you are looking forward in the future. Okay. So with that, thank you for the participations of from the panels and the audience today. Thank you for spending your time with us this meeting. I hope the discussion has been fruitful. You have, a lot, you have learned a lot of things in this uh, in the talk and also in the forum. Okay. So thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, and have a great evening. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. The participant, you can fill in the uh, feedback form and leave your email address in the feedback form so that we can uh, email you the calling of the session today. Thank you.